One, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Hopefully, technical issues aside, well, hopefully we worked all that out. Yes. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, <coughs> Last week was not good. <laughs> I'm gonna listen. I'm waiting for the uh, the stream to come through. Okay, and then we got hopefully we have sound. Sounds right. good to me. Okay. All right. If it cuts out, let us know, please. Yes. Yeah. Or if you hear weird sounds or something, let's hope everything. <coughs> let's hope everything yeah. is good. Yeah. <laughs> Brian's like. <laughs> Um, I'm just coming through in Spanish somehow. We don't even know how it's <laughs> happening. It's like, I don't know that Hold button. <laughs> I don't know that button. Um, yeah, so uh, if you guys like what you hear, please hit that share button. Let people know that we are live. Share the page. Uh, also, check the links below to follow uh, us, as well as Murder My Dude, as well as to get a t-shirt from Andy, as well as to buy merchandise from us. Merchandise has been killing it. Oh, that's awesome. Just not for this show. <laughs> well... Nobody really wants to buy tornado tag stuff, you know, because um, every other podcast in the world hates us. I guess maybe um, that's fine. We're we're here. We're doing things. Um, but yeah, it does help us to support and buy some T-shirts and merchandise and all that fun stuff. But with that being said, um, we are here joined to you, uh, once again with with Mister Serious Business Center, Andy mm -hmm. Edder, and we're live, baby. We're live, pal. and and Daddy O, big old big Brian. <laughs> I don't know. I, got the, I, I thought that, I think I think you, you look like a daddy out of me. I need to wear like beating the glasses now. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, hey man, these shows were cool, man. <laughs> I'm gonna start cool. I'm gonna start managing trading when wrestling comes back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we are going to uh, cover what happened this week in wrestling, but we are gonna go back and talk about Takeover because all Takeover the issues. Thirty, right? Well, that, Thirty-one. That was this Thirty-one. Week. Sorry. What do you mean? That, it was after SmackDown. It was this past weekend. Oh, I thought. Well, didn't we try to cover it last week? Or no, we were doing. Oh, the we tried to cover the build up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that makes but sense. The actual then. show was over the weekend. We take one week off and I fall yeah, apart. Fall apart. <laughs> As you take a sip from Liquid Death. Oh, there's an extra can in there if you want to try it. Then. Yeah, I'll try it. I'm sure it's probably. Please good sponsor water. us, Liquid Death. We want sponsorship. Um, <laughs> we're gonna cover WrestleMania this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've um, got my brand new pro wrestling crate T-shirt. Yeah. My orange Cassidy as an orange shirt. Uh, that's exciting. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's let's get into. Right away, let's get into uh, TakeOver 31. TakeOver take 31. And TakeOver's back. That last one was eh, not, good. not so great, but I thought this was uh, back to the high standard that we we have established for NXT TakeOver. Yeah. A new and, bar was set. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about right off the bat, the new setup. With the, yeah. with the, with the, the, the video wall, like so. yep. but it's flat. Mm -hmm. And then there's a cage with the with the. Plexiglass, plexiglass in front behind of, well, it. behind it, yeah. I like it. I, th I think that looks cool. It looks. Uh, I like that better than Raw and SmackDown. I do, too. I do, too. Because Raw and SmackDown, I think it's too much. It's just like... I, it, it's bright. an assault. Yeah. Yeah. Super bright. Um, it, it was... I, I enjoyed it in the look as well. Um, all right. Let's get into it. So, first match, opening match, was the North American title match, which has Damian Priest defending the title successfully against Johnny Gargano, pinned him with the Reckoning. Yeah, uh, one thing I want to say, Damian Priest, uh, whoever makes his pants, makes uh, Ray Ripley's, because they look almost just the same. Like, yeah. they're cool, but they're like, that's the same gear maker, because I know about that. The only stuff. thing with him, all right, so I, I'm I, I'm not saying I'm sold on Damian Priest. No, nah, I'm, I'm not either. But I'm a little more sold than I was before. Okay. But the only thing is this whole, like, I'm a rock star, baby, come to the after party, doesn't fit him <laughs> at all. His gimmick he just is, doesn't feel cool to me. No, he doesn't. He feels like a guy trying to... Pretend to be cool. Yeah, but I, then he's also like, is he a vampire? Is he like <laughs> he's an archer? Yeah, or... like what what what's going on it's here? All over the place. Yeah, they need to like laser that in, like focus in on something and go with that. I mean, yeah. he's gotten much better since ROH. Like this match mm -hmm. was pretty good. I enjoyed but, like, yeah, his, his athleticism is amazing. He's just yeah. kind of putting those little pieces together. For a big guy that kicks, he looks way more natural than Luchasaurus does. Like his kicks aren't in slow motion or That's anything. That's a great analogy. Awkward. Oh boy, um, <laughs> he didn't like that one. That's interesting. Um. <clears throat> But um, it's gonna be a long month with pumpkin beer. Jesus, yeah, you'll be tired of it. 
Uh, I, I I think he's, he's much better, but like I'm not sold on Damian Priest. And, but I, I don't know if you guys know this. Did you see that Johnny Gargano was kind of directing traffic for the whole match? Mm-hmm. He even oh, called, yeah. even like there was one blat- uh, blatant thing where he was telling like uh, I forget what he said like register the hits, something about selling the the punches or something. He said to him, and then another party's like, no, over here. I was like, oh boy, yeah. So like, Damian Priest might not be good, or it might be only be good depending on who he's wrestling. Well, that's the thing too. Like the buildup for that match did nothing for me because the character that he has to portray when he's not in the ring wrestling, I'm not selling. It's not selling on me. Party guy, I guess. Like <laughs> honestly, and I, I and I know like he has wrestled locally in here out here, and I know a lot of people are friends with him, and a lot of people like him. I'm just counting on the days where that North American title goes somewhere else. I can see. It. I don't think it's gonna be long because Vince is gonna look at him like, "Look, oh, God, he's six seven. Look at him." Yeah, you know, Vince is gonna love him. I, I think, oh, he he'll be really good for Raw, like it, yeah. uh, by that. But by NXT standards, I mean, yeah, when you have guys he'll like be a Thatcher great he'll be a great mid Carter on Raw. Yeah, <laughs> I mean Vince might get behind uh, world champion. I don't see it. I don't see but, it either. Uh, yeah, he's he he's not the level of an NXT guy. Yeah, unless you're counting uh, Fandango and. It, <laughs> it's crazy that you had a match with Mr. NXT TakeOver, and and it was probably... And, and it wasn't a bad match, but it was definitely the... the if you rank them... The it, low end of Johnny Gargano it TakeOver was, match. It was yeah. the low end of the card, too. Yeah. I mean, I thought I thought he did better than normal, but... Yeah. I mean, it's hard to have a bad match when you're wrestling someone good unless you're really bad. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he's gotten better. That's what I say. Some people really like David Priest. Like, Drew really likes David Priest. But I'm like, hey, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not so long yet. I don't really see it. I mean, it looks like, cool. I, I think if anything in NXT is stagnant, it might be their tag division, oh, and yeah. they could really use Psycho DIY. I, I'm I'm still beating the table for Psycho DIY. Yeah, just running through the tag division. I agree. Yeah, I mean, you really have undisputed era, and then it's like kind of make because I don't I, I can't see Gargano being in the title picture anytime soon, and no. I don't see Gargano's wife. And I know, I know they're trying to push it, but with the women's division now. We'll get to that in a second, but the, yeah. women, the women's yeah. division now, I can't see Candice LeRae. Uh, I don't see her win the title. No. Yeah. It, it, there was like one second, I was like, maybe, and I was like, no. No. All right, next match. Uh, definitely not now. Next match. Uh, the only non-title match on TakeOver, Kushida beat Velveteen Dream by submission to the hoverboard lock. So watch this match, and once again, I think Dream is slipping. Dream is not the same Dream two years ago. No. Ever since he got hurt, not the last time, the time before, he's just not the same. He's still good in the ring acting. Yeah. Like, he can sell. He can do all that. Just, he's just not grabbing people more. No. And maybe it's maybe it's some of the antics outside the I, ring. I, that has a lot to do with it. Um, but when it comes to Kushida and, and every, all you guys saying, this guy is a monster. That's great. And I just, like, I haven't mm-hmm. seen it. And then he did that one match on TV where I was like, oh, shit. Like when he did the, so the, con- the, I forget who he wrestled and he just like did the a whole- gauntlet or something. Yeah. It? And I was like, oh, yeah. okay. There's glimpses here. Like where this guy is something. And then now this whole ruthless Kushida look where he's just kind of like not playing games. Yeah. He's out there hurt people. This is almost like a 15 minute job match. It was awesome. Yeah. Like, it was awesome. Dream didn't get much in a little bit. He, he just picked him apart. Hey, what's going on, Harry? Welcome to the welcome to the stream. And Tori, sorry, I, I didn't get a chance to say hi to Tori when we first joined in, but what's going on, guys? Yeah, how's it going? Let make, us know if it uh, the sound. Yeah, let us know how the quality sounds, yeah. and make sure you guys, if if, if you wouldn't mind uh, hitting that share button. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, because she does great. Uh, we had, for the longest time, they didn't we had Doc Brown versus Marty yeah, McFly. Yeah, yeah, which someone yeah. came out like, why did he come out as Doc Brown? I was like, well, mind games, I guess. Because, yeah. you know, Doc Brown and Marty never fought to blows, but... yeah. I didn't mind that. He looked all right. But yeah, Dream's just like, yeah. And then with all that stuff, the speaking out stuff, it's kind of people like, I don't really want to like him. So, yeah. Eh, I don't know. I guess it's the right thing to do. Maybe take him off TV for a while. I would. I think I'd, I think it wouldn't hurt mm-hmm. Dream to maybe take some time away. Yeah. Do some, By the way, do some if, main if you, event. If you, uh, Tony, if you want to see some old Kushida stuff, not and obviously if you want to track down New Japan World, there's a million things on there. But with NXT, when he first came in last year, he had matches with Gulak that were phenomenal. Okay. I think he would have been 100% in the G1 this year had he not signed take, a WWE. Take a sip oh, yeah. It's a little spice. He, he would have been spice. in Takahashi's place and be like, oh, this G1's awesome. Yeah. Who who said, like, oh, yeah, he's just going to because of COVID. Who's, was that Naito? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he, it's he pretty fun. There. And what's his name cut a great promo? Uh, was it Shingo? I forget. It was the, I read Translate, obviously, but like it was, I was like, this is so good. <laughs> I think that's if what would hurt. If you've ever been wondering about New Japan World, now is the time to sign up. It's a G1. Yeah. So you're getting a great wrestling show three times, four times a week. 
lot of it's spicy. I think it's spicy. Ooh, that's the the, uh, the only I'm problem. I'm corn, coffee. Yeah. Be- oh, <laughs> the only problem with uh, New Japan, I think, for me is. I, I, I still do like build-ups, and I still do like the stories, and it is it is a disconnect for me when I have to read it. Well, you don't read... Um, uh, there is the English commentary, which I'm helps. saying when they talk, though. Oh, so, yeah, like, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. They're cutting uh, their promos. Yeah, but sometimes there's nothing. You're just listening to Japanese with nothing. Yeah. But, yeah, there's no, like, backstage thing or nothing like that. that, that I mean, I don't need backstage. It's kind of it's like all in the ring when yeah. they tell the story. It, I get that, and I like it, but I still... It is, it is still pro wrestling, and I still need a little bit of something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't just have that completely cut out. So that that's the only thing that tough is tough for me, is that when it comes to the story aspect, like, yeah, all right. It, it helps though with the English commentary because Kevin Kelly and stuff to say, well, he's he, he's lose on losing streak or whatever. They explain yeah. it and kind of mm-hmm. focus it in, but I don't. Know. Yeah. All right. Next match. Next match was for the cruiserweight title. Santos Escobar beat Isaiah Swerve Scott. After a double underhook GTS. Fantastic match. That's, I heard it was very good, but I had to pick a time I liked to it get some food, and this was the time. Yeah. I don't care about these two characters, nothing gets them. I was like, I'm going to skip this one, but then I heard it was really good. Yeah, it was a good match. Yeah. Very fast paced, very, very fast. I actually thought that uh, that Swerve was one of the title for a minute there, but Escobar kept it. Yeah. Wasn't the, the finish a little wonky, though? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Would yeah, he use some, uh, a face buster or something like that. Or there was a weird thing where he took move? he took the the padding off the the steel bar that goes from the turnbuckle to the post, mm-hmm. and he pushed him, and his head hit off the post, and then they brought him in. But he fell like and didn't actually hit it, no, but he so sold it like he hit yeah, it. Okay. And then they rolled well. him in the ring into the finish. So it was a little bit of a wonky finish, but overall the match was good. Yeah, yeah. I've been a big fan of Swerve for since it was uh, Shane Strickland. Yeah, he's, so he's good, he's good. I was kind of rooting for him to win the title, but alas, he was kill shot, right? Yes, yeah, he was awesome. Someone said he should have just kept that gimmick. But yeah, maybe he can. I thought maybe for sure, like he would come out with a mask, kind of like kill shot. Yeah, because he's like, you don't honor Luchador, and he comes out as a Luchador. Yeah, that would be awesome. But I, th- I think taking the mask off Escobar, it's like not good. I just another thing too, not like good. with like. You get like a black wrestler, right? So he has to be the powerhouse black guy. He has to be the criminal black guy, or he has to be the dancing black yeah. guy. Yeah, like there's no, <laughs> that's it. And it's just like it would have been cool to have like him being the luchador guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's so out of the realm of what normally WWE does with their like talent, like people of color or black mm-hmm. black superstars. You know? Yeah. And but one of the things in their defense, one of the things that got uh, him really over on the indies is his music. He was one of those guys like the Sandman where his music got him over. Yeah. Uh, he would always come out to Ain't Nobody by Shaka Khan and it, it always got over with the crowd. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Our next match. Next match was for the women's title. Uh, Io Shirai defeats Candice LeRae with the moonsault. But the big news here is after the match. Yeah. So interesting. They had a little bit of a spot where you thought, oh, maybe Candice going to sneak one out and cheat here. Mm-hmm. And uh, Eos, <laughs> like Eos. Crocato came in and yeah. counted and then a quick count, and he kicks out. Yeah. I was like, oh, she kicks out. But like, even if she didn't, it don't count. Yeah. Like, uh, so she wins. <laughs> the best was when, uh, when uh, I forget what happened, but Johnny Gargano's outside the ring, and then uh, Eo kicks out, and he's just like, what? And he flips around. He's like flop, flopping all over. I'm like, that's fun. Kicking his feet like yeah. stuff there. Um, but then on the the jump the the jumbotron. Uh, Tony Storm comes yeah, on the well, screen. Well, after Io wins, yes. Uh, and I she thought said, the match, uh, what do you think of the match itself? I thought it was good, but there was a couple of parts where I'm like, eh, but it was overall, it was pretty good. I, I'm not sold on Candice. It, yeah. It's not up to the standards of the typical NXT no, women's no, title match. No. Yeah, I, I think a lot, I, it's not, I'm not trying to be like, because who am I? I'd never trained a day in my life, but I think a lot of it falls on the shoulders of Candice. Probably. Io's great. Yeah, it was yeah. definitely not Io's fault. Io yeah. killed at that match. Um, but yeah, so Tony Storm comes on the Tron, and she says, uh, I took some time off. I disappeared for a while, and now I'm back, and uh, I'm, I'm coming for that title. Yeah, it's Tony and, time. And it's Tony time, and I thought it was cool how Io did the, like, I see you, I see yeah. you. Like, I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. And then we had the mystery person Motorcycle coming rider, on the bike. I, I don't want to, like, did I say... Like during our predictions, because they went for a title, didn't I say what? What if it was Ember? Because I know a while ago I said I, I know I said it, and I, I think, picked it in pro wrestling scorecards, and that got me the win. Yeah, really. I, I think I, we I, brought I it up. Card. Yeah, because I said it would be cool if it was Ember, because I I, I, do, I do remember saying too that like, um, when during Survivor Series last year when she was hurt, mm-hmm. she was technically a Raw superstar, but she was putting all over social media that she's Team NXT. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And she kept really promoting NXT, promoting yeah. NXT, and I was I like... I think she was smart enough to know she's better off there. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I, I was kind of saying to Tyler in a, in a page, he's like, oh, well, she's back. And I was like, it's the best place for her because yeah. the only reason Asuka's champion right now is because Charlotte's not being used. You can't use Charlotte and you can't use Becky. Yeah. And so, Ronda Rousey decided not to be there. Yeah. So who else? You got to go with Asuka. Yeah, you know, exactly. Or Sasha or Bailey, but they just had it. And so. it sucks because. So, I think Asuka is kind of made to a degree now. Like she's at another level. I, th- I think they get that now. I do but, too, but yeah, I, she's, if, she's if one of those step below the horse women. If one of those two were healthy, yeah. Oscar would or not she's be. She's on Raw with Becky and Charlotte. Oh yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 Ember Moon just gonna get Lost looked over. In the shuffle, yeah. You know what I mean? And she's gonna work mm-hmm. that hard to come back for her comeback to be a mid carder on, yeah. on 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 main then roster. Have four minute matches. Yeah, to know? get beat up every week by yep. Billy Kay. Yeah. No. But the only thing I didn't like is uh, I don't think they should have Tony and Ember at the same time. Like maybe just one. It's cool, but like I think the. It's more impactful if you just have one. I wouldn't have done Tony. Yeah, yeah I, w- I would have saved that. Tony. I would have had Tony pop the, on when she, when she shows up in the crowd or yeah. she shows up like at the arena, not a, tr- a jumbotron. Yeah, um, but yeah, but the or em- even the thing they did on NXT TV last night, even if they would have just done that, yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, but em- uh, Ember does makes her appearance, looks great. I don't um, like the side head shave thing, but that's me. I, I, I don't mind. I think someone's it like, "What's well, her new gear?" I'm like, "No, it's not. That's just her motorcycle outfit." Yeah, she's gonna wrestle probably the same stuff. Yeah, she, well, she came out on TV with a different gear yeah. and new music. Oh, really? Which wow. I'm not a fan of, but oh. it is what it is. I understand that they're, doing, they're going through some stuff with the music stuff. Yeah. Um, I love her old music. I thought it was way yeah. better. Uh, the new one just maybe has to grow on me a little bit. It's kind of like the Fiend music where it's it hints at the Bray Wyatt music, but it's a different, harder, yep. like a rock take okay, on it. Yeah. yeah. Like the lyrics and she's are, wearing pants now. Oh, yeah, really? She, wow. she has pants, and she comes out with like this skull dragon, like skull deer mask, oh. and then she takes it off, and she's like, she's she's still toting the line. Like they're kind of building her to be a badass. This is cool. Like she's just she not playing on, games. Like yeah. she takes the hood off and puts it on the side of her shoulder, like it's a pelt. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's all. Yeah, it's sick. It, it, it reminded me of like, her, uh, and this is a kind of obscure video game reference. It's like a cyberpunk thing meets Horizon Zero Dawn almost. Yeah. yeah she's like a black Aloy. Yeah. It looks kind it, of yeah. It was cool. Uh, I know we jumped a little bit ahead there, but yeah, Ember makes her debut. That that to me that was enough right there to say the pay per view is fantastic. I'm excited for Ember Moon <laughs> to be back. I'm a huge Ember Moon fan. Um, so oh, Ember and Io is going to be phenomenal if they oh, do that match. Yeah. Does, em- does Ember take the title off Io? Uh, not. I don't a, know not, about that. No. No. no? Not, I, he was going to have it for a little bit. Also, Tony I, and Io they had great matches in Stardom, so that's going to be good. And then yeah. Tony versus Ember. Yeah. So yeah. At this and then, point, and then you have Rhea I would Ripley maybe in there have. Too. Yeah. At this point, I would maybe have Ember and Rhea go for the women's tag titles. Oh, there you go. Because they're I, supposed to be across all brands. I would put them on NXT, leave them there. The tag team titles? Yeah, yeah that the I women's do. tag team. Yeah. yeah. And just get I mean, just put the women there. That are good. And mm-hmm. then the, the showy women, like Carmella, she can be on Raw SmackDown. Yeah. The ones that aren't as in-ring. Oh, she had a really interesting whatever. thing last week when she made her, de- her new yeah. character debut. And she's like, I was off TV for six months, showed a new look, and everyone told me how, t- yeah. how disgusting it looks. She goes, this is, this is the part of wrestling fans I fucking hate. Well, here's the thing. Male or female, you're gone for six months, you come back and look different, people are going to talk. Yeah. It happened to the Warrior. When people are like, that's mm-hmm. not the same guy. That's a different yeah, guy. He died true. in a motorcycle. He lost so much muscle. What? It happens there. If you look that's different, true. if you do not look the same as when you left, people are going to be upset. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. they criticized Chris K- Keith Lee for new gear and a new music. Yeah, but that wasn't his fault. And that's not his fault at all, you know. Um, all right, unless um, you look better, like when you left, like if you if you were fat and then you come back and you're jacked, like oh wow, it looks yeah. great. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get to our next match. Uh, let's get to the big one here: uh, NXT title and an epic match, big, hard hitting, uh, New Japan uh, Noah style, style slugfest, Finn Balor. Retains the NXT title over Kyle O'Reilly. Hands down, I haven't felt so. There's all right. So the last time I felt something in a wrestling match where I was watching it, and I was like, almost felt like I was a child again. Is when I thought Kofi Kingston was going to be Daniel Bryan in Elimination Chamber. Okay, like mm-hmm. when I was like, it was like the like a false counts. Like I was like, holy fuck! If they put if they do this with Kofi, this would be huge. Yeah, and it set that seed. Like I still think. I mean, I'm happy he won at Mania, mm-hmm. but if he would have won that night, I would I would have popped because yeah. it was like he was like right there. You know what I mean? Um, I, that was the last time I felt something like that in wrestling in a long, long time. Um, and then the other time I can recall is when I was a kid and I watched Sean and Brett in the Iron Man match, okay. um, where I didn't think Sean was actually going to beat Brett. I didn't think Sean uh, uh, Kofi was actually going to beat Daniel Bryan, but like I secretly wanted him to. Yeah. And I didn't think Kyle was going to win, but there was some moments in that match where I'm like, he might fucking do when this. When he had that heel hook, the double, when he had his legs, I was like, maybe they will give it to him. And I'm like, nah. It was so close. Like, the way he was 
doing the tap thing, yeah. and he kept pulling them further away, and they were keeping it extra, extra long. I was like, this is a tap. Yeah, they this were, is a tap. They were throwing some hard, strong style shots. Maybe too strong style, because apparently Kyle had some oh, chipped yeah. teeth. Yeah, three chipped teeth. And then when he hit Finn with that knee at the end, I was like, and he grabbed his chin, and I, I immediately, like, he's fucked up. Because it was the cell, like, it wasn't a, a wrestling cell. It was yeah. like, oh, he's hurt. Yeah, and then blood started and, and pouring out. His, his face started slowly swelling up, and you just see him like, oh, like, oh, and they broke his jaw in two places, so. And an Poor impacted face. molar, not fun. Oh, oh my. That is not they fun They killed all. each other. Yeah. For our entertainment, and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a great match. I wonder if Meltzer rated it. I mean, I, I mean, sure, he uh, will. That would I, be... I don't think the Observer is out yet. I think that'll be coming out probably tomorrow. Okay. If I that's not say. a five star, <laughs> I, I quit. Say what is? Well, well you got... five star is not the, the cap anymore. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It's the dude's opinion. Like I yeah, said, if you want to say like that idiot said that uh, Alicia Fox versus Molina is the best match you've ever seen, that's your opinion. Yeah. I mean, to me, I can't get mad at you for like, you know. To me, this is, this, this was one of the best matches I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it was, Kyle, it was probably their, both their best match in NXT so far. Oh, uh, yeah. And, well, Absolutely. Finn's best in WWE. The infe- I mean, Kyle, Kyle had some great tag The matches. infected paper boy will make you tap out. All right. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure what that means we'll Skip that. Um, and a great match. I, I, I think Meltzer might give, he might give it five and a half even. I don't know. It depends. My, Meltzer loves the yeah. Japanese their strong style. Yeah. The uh, only yeah, the only NXT match there WWE anything match that broke five for him was uh the when la- Gargano beat be Cole for the title at Takeover New oh, York. Oh yeah, that was five and a half, wasn't it? Yeah. The ladder match got a lot yeah, too. That was five. Five even. The ladder match was five. Yeah. Five star Lars. Yeah, five star Lars. Hey, five star. <laughs> he, he has three. a five star match and Daniel Bryan doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like what? <laughs> but um, hey EC three has a five star match. Yeah. <laughs> the last the last five star match, uh, I don't know if he, I don't think the observers come out yet this week, but uh, there was one five star in the G one so far this year. It was uh, um, Tanahashi Shingo and Osprey. Oh, really? That was really. What about Tanahashi and, and Naito? That was fucking. That was day one. I'm like, this match is awesome. Really? Or was Probably it day two? It, four, it was day two quarter or something. Was it was it better than uh, this main event take takeover? No, I don't think it was better, but it was it was real close, but really? it wasn't better. Yeah, interesting. I have to check it out. There, there's some awesome matches there. Uh, Ishii versus Suzuki was was really good. Yeah, so. and then at the very end, um, I always forget his name. What's the what's the Ridge big, Holland? Ridge Holland. Poor man. Yeah, his name is Ridge. Like, look at that ridge of that mountain. Yeah, but like that's stupid and it's hard to say. So I'm gonna call him Rich Holland. Yeah. So he comes out and, for, he, and throws a beating up. He came out pole. and I go Dexter Lewis and I was like, wait, it's Pat McAfee. I'm like, I have no idea who this is. Yeah, and he threw a beaten up Adam Cole to the feet of the undisputed era. As, as I one of the things I saw that I, he was wearing Adam Cole. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people are like, you know, they had this great thing. They shook it, hands, it signed respect. It should have ended right and there. And they had the WWE. Mm-hmm. And I'm, yeah. like, I, I'm like, I didn't know who this guy was. I'm like, I know, I watch NXT, and I, I don't know who this guy is. Well, what's going on? Well, they were doing this whole thing where I think now it's going to be scrapped, obviously, for we'll, we'll get why in a minute here. Um, a, but a blessing in disguise. Where they were going to do something where he was a hired hitman, where he went after, some, he was paid to go after Adam Cole. Oh, like who hired him? Yeah. Like do that? I think that's what they were hitting. It was Fandango. Yeah, it was Kyle. Um, uh, but yeah, so that'll do it for NXT. Overall, man, like how you guys said in the beginning, um, welcome back, NXT. Great show. The, oh, yeah. The ratings are not in yet for Meltzer for TakeOver. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. I think about the ratings are uh, last night. Yeah, both shows were down. Uh, AEW did win, but both shows were down because of the uh, debate. Was it the vice presidential debate? Yeah. Yeah. Does it have something on your hair? The most, yeah, it's a fly most something. over thing, most over thing <laughs> in the world right now is a fly. Oh, I, I didn't get that. I a like, fly <laughs> landed on our vice president's yeah. head, and it's the most over thing ever. Like we're literally trying to elect. I mean, I think it's stupid in general. Like we're trying to, we're having a popularity contest to find the two best people in the world to run our country. And it's like the two worst. And it's like what, we're what was South Park a, a, a douche. A, what was it? Poop uh, sandwich heard, and a giant douche, douche and turd sandwich. Yeah. It was loud. And, and we're, we're, we're just like, I don't know. You watch those debates and you're just like, oh my God. This is where we are. Yeah. Uh, and a fly is the most over thing. You would think it like the pick got popped. Like it was it had road make the fly president. Why it, would had, you... it had road warrior pop. The fly the fly landed, the whole world just went, <laughs> Oh my Oh god. my god. Yeah. It was great. They're gonna interview the fly, it's gonna go, Well, yeah, well it goes like this. <laughs> I can just imagine all of the skits are going to come out where they're going to. Ooh, that was a, a fuzzy. Uh, yeah, um, that might have been me doing my Hulk impression. Uh, um, all right, let's get into uh, SmackDown. 
SmackDown seems so long ago. Uh, so we had the uh, the opening thing was a promo where Reigns is anointing himself the tribal chief. Jay Uso interrupts. We we're gonna get another Hell in a Cell or get a, another match with them at Hell in a Cell. AJ Styles interrupts and says, "No, I should be getting the title shot," which leads to the impromptu Jay Uso beating AJ Styles with a big splash. A tag team superstars beating your a former world champion. I mean, they're trying to push him because there wasn't the other Uso hurt. Yeah, he's yeah. injured. So, yeah, I mean, he was out, he was out on the pay per view. We threw in the towel. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm okay with it. I kind of like the storyline. It's like, not terrible. Yeah, it's not terrible. And some people are saying that means AJ might be moving shows. It's like he's losing on the way out. Yeah, maybe. I see that. Put AJ in NXT. How about that? That'd be fucking Ooh. sick. Hey, he never that, got let's have AJ and and Nakamura and Cesaro, Kevin Owens and um, uh, Sami Zayn, and they can have Fandango, Tyler Breeze, and uh, Rachel Gonzalez. Raquel, 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 Raquel Gonzalez. Raquel. Yeah. And, and they can also have uh, Dexter Loomis and Drake Maverick and Killer Cross. I'm cool with it. But not Scarlet. <laughs> not Scarlet. He's Scarlet. All she does is come out and just wave. Yeah, she just comes out. She yeah. does the Lacey Evans where her music hits and she walks under the ring then yeah. turns around and walks back out. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I forgot the thing I might have popped for biggest that they teased on uh, on the takeover. Oh, yeah. The- the twenty eighth, the uh, the the October twenty eighth episode of NXT is going to be Halloween Havoc. Yeah, hosted After by Shotzi years, Blockback. Back. I know. I'm glad it's back. I'm glad it's NXT and not stupid Raw or SmackDown. And Shotzi apparently used to be like an Elvira type movie host in California somewhere. Yeah, I heard. So. Oh wow! So that should be pretty cool. Who do we get? Who comes back? Boogeyman. Uh, what about Papa Shango? Maybe, maybe. You know what I want? Spin the wheel, make, make the, the deal. deal. Jake Roberts. <laughs> That's, uh, that you, well, Sting ain't going to come back for that. No. Sting's, gonna, but, uh, Sting's not coming back for that. Cactus isn't coming back for that. Vader's dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, about, what about Taker? Do you think Taker shows up in no, Halloween Havoc? No, 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 no. Just to kind of like... Maybe if Paul Bearer is still alive. Maybe Kane. Maybe. Maybe. Kane's a... Maybe they'll do a Chamber of Horrors match and they could have the Chair of Torture. <laughs> Kevin does, Sullivan's does coming the, out. Does the Fiend Abdullah. show up? Uh, no. No, no, no. He's, he's, he's above NXT. Plus, like, what's the fiend gonna do? Like, when he gets in the ring, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I, a horror show. I, when he gets I, in the ring, I would like, ring. I would like Papa Shango. Boogeyman, I think, is almost a guarantee. I think, I think Boogeyman is probably your best yeah. bet. Yeah, I don't know if Papa Shango is. I don't know if Godfather is going to shave his head to be Papa Shango again. Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's gonna be Papa Shango on the whole train. It'll Pop, be like a mixture. Yeah, hit Papa Shango with the pimp hat on. <laughs> Yeah, a mixture of the two. Oh, man. All right. Uh, what else happened here on Raw? Uh, Sami Zayn sorry. had a promo backstage. He threw Jeff Hardy's Intercontinental title in the trash now that he is the champion again. And they set up a match for those two later in the night. Uh, the next two matches, you had Otis beating John Morrison with a Vader bomb and Sheamus beating Shorty G with two bro kicks. Poor is he still going by Shorty G? Yes. Send him uh, to NXT yeah. and let's get Chad Gable Yes, back. please. How about that? <laughs> NXT is going to be this awesome... Uh, Thing of work. I'll, I'll, let me have the draft for NXT. I would like because we can't have Jason Jordan, right? Yeah, and maybe it's not yeah. a bad, terrible thingy, but give us Chad, Chad, and Shelton team up and be the new, the new team angle. Okay, well, I'm all right they, with that. They were Shelton a team be for good. A bit. We'll take Shelton too. They can have Aaliyah. <laughs> but he's gonna be Shelton X Benjamin. Yeah, he's gonna be Shelton X Benjamin. He's gonna be <laughs> Suzuki Gun. Yeah, he's gonna be uh, Shelton Gun. Yeah. Yeah, or you could put like uh, Gable with um Gable with Thatcher. That would be good. Oh, that would there, be great. So I've been do. I've been slowly showing Tori and Tori more wrestling stuff. Mm-hmm. Like she came and watched the pay per view, and then she she watched a little bit of NXT with me last night when she was hanging out, and because uh, I was helping her with her set up her live stream. Okay. And then I showed her Ric Flair Jay Lethal. Oh, <laughs> what did she say? This is the greatest thing ever. She was hilarious. Yeah, and she and then I showed her old Flair where he did the the Eric Bischoff. I'm not leaving. I'm goes, not leaving. I'm not fired. You can't fire me. I'm already fired. <laughs> it's like, and if you cut that camera off, <laughs> when you come back, I'll be naked. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best things when Nitro was going downhill was like, not it was 2001, but early 2001. It was like, like, like six months before he went down. He was the president of WCW, but he was nuts. Mm-hmm. He's like, you can't tell me what to do. I'm the president of the United States. I'm the president. And I was Wasn't like, that when he just went into the the uh, the uh, asylum for a little bit, and, like Scott Hall's just ran yeah. away? <laughs> it was Rick Flair. It was nuts. He was thought he was the president of the United yeah. States. I'm the president of the world. I'm the world president. You can't tell me. <laughs> just, yeah, and then the whole like the woo woo. It is my life. That's just my life. I'm gonna make him cry. 
I'll even make the fat one yeah. cry. Woo, woo, hey, woo, hey, you, woo. honey, honey. Yeah. <laughs> that is so good. He's an idiot. Ric Flair and the TNA, A plus. Yeah. Especially when they hide the Corona, or the, not the Corona, the... Uh, the Natty Ices. No, no, they were... Uh, what, what was the, the clear... Smirnoff. Dr- Smirnoff. Smirnoff. Yeah. yeah. You've been iced. They would ice them, yeah. Yeah. Funny, funny. You funny. could give Ric Flair any garbage, and he could turn it into gold. Mm-hmm. Rusev, too. Oh, yeah. E- except right now, he's not really... But that's mm. not gold. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, what else happened on SmackDown? We had the uh, the KO show with Alexa Bliss. They discussed Fiend. Uh, Owens thought she was brainwashed, and he's apparently right. He appeared, and he gave Owens the mandible claw. Owens needs off main roster. He needs to go back to NXT. He, he's never going to be a champion on yeah, any of those. Here's the thing. I don't want to watch Kevin Owens versus the Fiend. I don't. What's to watch, watch don't Kevin Owens get Smackdown. squashed again? Yeah, like... I don't know. I just don't. I, I don't see. A when, good... When's his contract coming up? Yeah, so please go he, to AEW, where please. he can go somewhere else to be utilized. He'll be. He'll go to NXT. He'll go to AEW. Be world champion a week. Yeah. Could <laughs> Could you imagine? And I, I. I don't know if he just signed a new contract or not. But with the the tag division AEW already has, and you add Steen Erico to that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Like, <laughs> I, I, like I don't want to see him tagging, but hey, if they go to AEW and they tag up, oh. Jericho's well, in like, AEW, you can li- literally be a main event and be a tag team. Like yeah, you, you yeah. could be a main event of the biggest pay per view and be a tag Jer- team. Jericho, Jericho gets forced out of the inner circle by MJF, and now he has a new best friend. <laughs> and Kevin Owens shows up. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> awesome. Just continue with that. There's so much they could do. Like, <laughs> yeah, the best man and the best friend. Yeah, there you go. You can do like Kill Steen Kill, and then uh, John Moxley. Wait, wait, there we wait, go. Everything's wait, back. Wait, Everything's wait, good. Wait. The cord was a little loose. We're sorry about that. We were back. I, I bumped it with my foot to crack my knee, and I... How dare you, Tony? Oh, I fucking freaked out. I was like, oh, my God, we're cursed. Oh, no. Wait a minute. It's Tony. He's he's retribution. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm T-Bar. <laughs> I'm T-Bone. T-Bag. Or whatever. I'm T-Bag. <laughs> I'm Z-Pack. <laughs> I'm Z-Pack. Punk would like that one. <laughs> Oh my god! This is the only show, literally, out of all six shows, it's the only one that somehow the technical bug always hits. Um, yeah. All right. So SmackDown's done, right? Uh, well, no. A few more oh. things. You had Matt Riddle, uh, Graham and Lincoln, Lindsay Dorado beating Corbin Cesaro and Nakamura, but yet still Dorado and Kalisto argue. We mentioned it earlier. Carmella is the mystery woman. Uh, Banks and Bailey is next week, and then your main event was uh, the IC title. Sami Zayn beat Jeff Hardy. He exposed a turnbuckle. Pulled him down on it after the whisper in the wind. Mm. I love Sammy as IC champ. I like it. Sammy's just so good. I'm I'm, I'm glad he's a regular. He's my second favorite guy on, on in uh, main roster right now besides uh, Roman. I think they're doing great with Roman, mm-hmm. but Sammy's right there behind him for me. Um, now we talked about it. Maybe we didn't get to talk, talk about it, but I mean, this is li- like this whole high chief thing. This is definitely leading to Roman versus Rock, right? You, you would think. You would think at yeah. some point. You know, I, I'm sure if. Fits into the rock schedule of movies because you know if he does want to get hurt because I understand that pushes yeah. the movie back and that's big money so you know so he yeah, has the time off so maybe it won't be wrestle maybe maybe like if it's movies or maybe some I think they're t- yeah. they're hinting at it and teasing it and hoping that by that time they can do a full stadium and yeah. they can have well, people in the crowd apparently you can do that right now in Florida yeah and the, uh, the, the talk is that. WrestleMania instead of being in L.A. next year because California is not going to be op- reopening stadiums at that point that it might be in Tampa where it was supposed to be this year, and it'll just move L.A. to the year after that. Because literally, they could do Tampa tomorrow in a stadium because they, they're they letting the Miami Dolphins, and Dolphins aren't doing it, but they're letting the Miami Dolphins, if they want to, have 67,000 people in their stadium. Yeah, they said you could have 100% occupancy. And they said, we're, we're, we're okay Bad with idea. the 20%. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, Vince, they tell him, it's on. It's going to be so weird to see crowds in wrestling again. Yeah. For for a while, then we get used to it. This like the the empty arena was was a shocker, and then you got used to it. I mean, yeah, the first couple like first month, and then yeah, you'd be like, it's gonna be str- that'd be old hat. It's gonna be strange. It's gonna be strange. Oh, I forgot something else too. Wrestling related. So I was showing like showing Tori more stuff. I showed her the retirement of Edge, and then the return. Okay. And then I showed her fan reactions of when he did return, and people just <laughs> oh, bawling God. their yeah. eyes out. Like, and then I got emotional you watching it. Show I was her- like. Oh. Um, the biggest they, one for that was Daniel Bryan. Oh yeah. man, yeah, Daniel Bryan. When Daniel Bryan came back, that made me welt up a little bit. 
You should show her Bailey versus Sasha from TakeOver, the first one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That'd be a good one to watch. Two girls um, just having a great match. Unfortunately, one of them Sasha Banks. If you want to go very old school, WrestleMania 7. But you, you need to know the context. Uh, it was a two-year-long angle. Actually, it was like a three-year-long angle uh, with Macho Man and Elizabeth and all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I seen the still, the, still the best long-term story- storytelling WWE's ever done. The lust in his eyes. No, that's, that's, that's before that. Oh, that was this WrestleMania This is when, when Liz is in oh. the Guardians with her blue and white star big sweater thingy on. And, and Sherry's like... Yeah, Macho they've Man been loses. apart oh. for like two years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Sherry comes back in. Or, uh, she still loves him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a guy in like a yellow shower cap in the crowd crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, crying. And that guy with the glasses that's every New York show. <laughs> show. <laughs> oh my God, wrestling's awesome. Um, you should show her the mega powers explode. The mega powers explode. Yeah. Just, just, a, just that everything Randy Savage did from <laughs> WrestleMania 4 to WrestleMania 7. <laughs> just show her all... No, that's the... Just go up and, I said, Tori, sit down and we're going to watch the yeah. entire best of Macho <laughs> Man. <laughs> we're going to watch three years of WWE. <laughs> um, <laughs> that storyline is still one of my... Her, Storylines of all time. One well, of the, the best storylines, too. The, the mega, mega powers, powers explode, yeah. Mm-hmm. My, I mean, it I'm was par- so simple. You I'm want partial. my woman, you know? I'm partial. I think the 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 whole Brett and Sean yeah, that was very taking good. the title yeah, that was the good Mont- leading yeah. to the Montreal screw job. Mm-hmm. That's one of the craziest storylines yeah. because it was like legit real and still what it was. So was, so was the Savage one. Yeah. So was, Savage yeah. thought everywhere was after Liz. Yeah. I'm not sure a lot of them He, he would lock her in a closet. Yeah, he was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's wild. Yeah, watch Dark Side of the Ring. You should show her Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. yeah. She likes doc- like documentary yeah. stuff like that. I mean, yeah. that's a good show to show even non-wrestling fans. Heidi yeah. was making fun of me. She was like, you're like a little kid who's trying to show all everyone their dinosaurs, <laughs> but nobody wants to see your dinosaurs. I was like, no, she likes it, right? Yeah. And she's like, sure, I like this. And then she's sitting there going, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Um, where, where, where are we now? I don't know. Let, let, I, let's that, that let's, let's review the Mega Powers Explode. <laughs> yeah, let's just go right into let's that. Let's review that Saturday Night Main Event. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so that's SmackDown. Yeah, Raw. Now, oh. You know uh, what? Just well, give us winners and losers. Raw, real quick before Raw, let's just really, really quickly touch on Ring of Honor. It was the end of the first round of the pure title tournament. You had uh, Tracy Hot Sauce Williams beating Russ Taylor. Uh, Rust Taylor, uh, excuse me. Okay. And then, unfortunately, sadly, a uh, competitive match, but PJ Black did defeat Tony Deppin. Mm. Yeah. Now, hey, foot's, I watched, in, foot's in the door, man. I watched a video yeah. of Tony Deppin watching himself on Ring of Honor. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I, but, tell you, they, I, got it, I got it sent to me on Snapchat. But and good, then good uh, EC3 uh, also. They had a little also, real quick. EC3's headed there. Wow. To, to uh, Ring of Honor? Yeah. Is he doing Ring of Honor and Impact, or is he leaving Impact? Seems like it. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Uh, I would think they would, he would be doing both. I think they'll let you do both. Interesting. Um, yeah. If you do, if you do, uh, sorry, if you are, if you do do, if you are a fan of Tony Deppin and you would like to show support, uh, the first link in our bio, in our links down lo- below is uh, Tony Deppin is opening up a brewery in downtown Pottsville with a, a few of our friends, and they make really, really good beer, and you can donate and get cool uh, swag, as well as helping create a brewery um, that you know, is done by a local independent wrestler. So definitely yeah. go show them some love and throw them a couple bucks and help them uh, create their brewery. And you're giving me a nearby place to drink. I would appreciate it too. Yeah, within walking distance for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so walking home might not be that. <laughs> <laughs> Staggering distance. I miss, I, I'll definitely, when that place opens, I'll definitely miss Steve's apartment above the Greystone where I can just sleep in. <laughs> But all right, let's get through Raw. Let's do the Winter's Illusion. Just get through that nonsense. Uh, yeah, real quick, you had a, an Orton promo at the beginning. Drew interrupted. Asuka, Mandy, and Dana beat Zelina and Italia and Lana. What are the names? Sexy Pimble- Muscle. No, that's uh, Oscar. <laughs> Sexy Muscle Sexy, Friends is yeah. what Oscar called them. Which, yeah. uh, I'd much rather them be that than whatever stupid name they will get. Yeah. And of course, uh, Lana gets the p- gets pinned here, and then she gets put through a table again by Nia <laughs> <laughs> because WWE is petty. Uh, one of the uh, one of the show long storylines was MVP was offering a one night deal for either Apollo Ricochet or Mustafa Ali to join her business. We had some twenty four seven title hijinks. Uh, Drew was dressed up like Randy Orton was the week before, and and Truth thought he was Randy Orton in a bad Drew Gulak disguise. Uh, Gulak wins the title, then he loses it back to Truth later in a dumpster. Yeah, in a dumpster. They're doing those Bianca ba- Belair skits where she's basically Mr. Perfect. Like, she's just good at everything. Okay. Today wait. it was uh, trivia. Oh, Miss Perfect. Trivia. Oh, I'd rather, Perfect. Yeah, I'd rather be throwing, you know, the football and the catching football it. The football and catching it. <laughs> shooting, yeah. shooting behind the hood. Yeah. 
if they bring back a hey, female Mr. Perfect, I would that's, fucking that's love that. That's good for her gimmick, the yes, the yes, the or whatever. Yeah. So, hey. Yeah. Give, give her some personality better than some people who've been there for years and have no personality. Yeah. Hey, and she's got the charisma to pull it yeah, off, too. She has, yeah. she has very good yeah, presence. she's good. And then uh, Rollins and Murphy was another big thing throughout the show. Uh, Murphy wanted Rollins to apologize to Aaliyah Mysterio. Uh, we had a tag match show where Rollins and Murphy beat Humberto Carrillo and Dominic. Mm. Dominic now, he's, and he's then, officially on the mid-card now. Yep, right where he yeah, belongs. Pretty yep. much. Actually, he belongs at the fucking training center. Yeah. And, and then go to NXT, but, you know, whatever. They knew if they sent him to NXT and they just he built him up. He would have lost at, the And first, built yeah. him up as just Rey Mysterio's son, but not used him as with his dad. Yeah. He would have been lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, KO called out Bray. Bray comes on the sh- uh, Firefly Funhouse on the Titan Tron. And they're just setting up a match for SmackDown for uh, for Friday. Afterward, Alistair Black attacks Owen, so that is still going on. And an exhibition match, because Braun is a SmackDown guy, even though he's been on Raw every week. Uh, Braun, be, or Braun and Keith Lee had a double count out. Sorry, just trying to speed through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin beat Ricochet and Apollo Crews. Uh, Lashley made Apollo submit to the Hurt Lock again. Murphy beats Rollins into an apology in the next segment, just beats him with the kendo stick. Well, wasn't there a After, whole a countdown going on where the countdown... Yeah, they, for... they actually did a countdown clock because Mur- uh, Rollins said that Murphy had until 10 o'clock to apologize to him. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. We're going to have a countdown clock somewhere here. <laughs> and so, like, I don't know what the countdown clock is going to represent. You better. It's always 10 o'clock. Yeah. Well, I don't know about 10 o'clock. Yeah. Some, uh, you have till 10 o'clock to apologize. Yeah. I like when it was used to be you have till 11. Why? What happens at 11? Is it because the show's going off the air? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, here's my. Op- oh, yeah. Yeah. we're off the oh, air. We'll see you next week. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> well, ba- back in the day, the third hour, the, like the last hour, second or third, whatever it might be, used to be the highest rated hour. Now it's the lowest. So yeah. they always try to keep people keep people there. I wonder why. It's- yeah, maybe just put. Because maybe- the show friggin' sucks. Yeah, maybe, that's why. maybe it actually entertain us. I like so. how no one, like, the, the, everyone's like, what can we do to get. To make this show have ratings. I don't know. Maybe make it not suck. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, make it good. that's the one thing that Do any wrestling different. fan, like, no one is saying, wow, you know what's awesome? Raw. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know why, unless it's just Vince, unless there's all these good ideas. I'm like, nope, we're doing it this way. Yeah, there's really nothing, yeah. there's nothing even to write home about story wise. I mean, Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, but that, I mean, yeah. we're over it. Like, yeah, I'm all for long term booking, but we've seen enough of. Uh, Randy Orton against Drew. We've seen enough of Rollins against the Mysterios. Yeah. We've seen enough of the Hurt Business against Apollo. What happened? Like you don't you don't need three storylines that are your entire show that like, run for yeah. six like months. Like SmackDown, each. you're like, okay, maybe we're getting a new Money in the Bank because that whole thing. Maybe we're getting the Fiend and Alexa are interesting, and Roman. the way they're booking yeah. Roman is good. Yeah, but it's like you don't have to have the guy on every single week. Yeah, focus. You have. 500 people in your company focus on somebody else. Absolutely. I'm on every other week. Then people are like, hey, we're in see what's his name. Oh, we'll oh have to Sammy watch Zane, next week. Sammy Zayn as an IC champion is interesting yeah. in SmackDown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, SmackDown's been very good, I think. Uh, let's get this ending and then the bullshit that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically, we have uh, Buddy Murphy turned babyface here, and then Seth caught him in the eye, and then he started beating on him until Aaliyah stopped him. And then the Mysterios are mad at Aaliyah for saving Murphy. Uh, Baszler and Jax beat the Riot Squad. And then we had Ali against MVP. It didn't even really get going because Muhammad Ali is or Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali <laughs> came out. Oh, Whoa! That would be amazing. I'm watch that. That would be amazing. So how uh, about Mustafa what cul- Ali? How about what culture uh, is doing? Did a whole video now of all the people, all the wrestlers who should have died this year. Oh, that, that, that have died. Actually. That have died. Yeah. Yes. And I Did like, they include oh. the guy that Bobby Lashley appeared to have killed in uh, <laughs> Raw Underground? I didn't watch because he just choked the guy. He just choked the guy and he just went limp. I'm like, yeah. he killed him. Uh, he's dead. Yeah. It's just I'm just so disappointed that we didn't do it first. <laughs> we talked about it, we just yeah. didn't do it. We didn't pull the trigger. People, all them people died, and then they all come back. So it's like, well, why didn't even do it? Yep. Anyway, so then this so, music. So Muhammad happens. Ali's out there. Muhammad Ali Mustafa out. Ali oh. is the uh, leader of retribution. It, it seems. Yeah. Cool. Ooh. People are like, yeah, this, they, this is a good idea because he was the hacker. There was no way. Yeah, they're, that they they, can't, they put these two together. That just happened that way because yeah. they dropped mm-hmm. the hacker gimmick. Maybe it was fucking Solomon Crow in NXT when he was hacking. Yep. And he, you know, even though he was in a different company. Well, let's see where it goes, but I don't, I don't have high hopes. Oh, I don't and then your I your don't. main event here: Orton, Rude, and Ziggler beat Drew McIntyre in the Street Profits when Ugh. Orton beat Drew with the RKO. I'd rather stare at the, the running water for two minutes <laughs> than watch two minutes of that match. Yeah. Ugh. NXT. <laughs> 
The NXT, yes. Oh, here's uh, what I was going to get to the good shows. I was going to say about Retribution. Either full comedy or ditch the mask and make them serious. Yeah. That's uh, the way you can go. That's I, I did it. not watch Impact at all. I have no idea what's even happening over there. No, I don't. I've just been so busy with everything else. I haven't had time to watch it. No, I'm not. No one else either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wish I could, but yeah, I, I'm yeah. recording Murder My Dude with Impact. So they have I wish good, I could. good wrestlers. I probably could watch it in my nefarious ways that I watch wrestling, but I yeah. I know it's on Twitch. I don't know if you can watch the uh, archive no. though without being a subscriber. Yeah, I don't think you oh, can. Oh, okay. Can you watch live with being? I think so. Can you, you can watch live, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm recording just a Joe show. Joe Schmo on, on Well, the Twitch? only thing the only thing big with I think Impact, I think news wise, is uh, RVD and Katie Forbes are officially gone. Yeah, they left. Uh, well, they didn't get renewed. Yeah. But I mean, RVD's that age where it's like, eh, you know, you're not getting RVD from 97 or 2000. Well, the other so. thing, the other would, big would, thing, well, it's not still... a big thing, but it's a cool <laughs> thing, is that uh, The Rock is going to be recording a thing for Ken, Ken Shamrock's Rock. induction in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Yeah. I would take RVD if I can get Katie Forbes in my federation. I'll just sign Katie Forbes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, R- I still, if you were having him as like a, like a Taz, I Taz would, I would now. have him do exactly what he was doing in, in, in Impact, where he was like, like, yeah. Not doing everything you want him to do, the super fate, yeah. super heel, and because he can't. <laughs> yeah. but it's like I, I would have him maybe wrestling, wrestle sparringly because you know, it's yeah, not anymore. But, you know. Who do you think snatches him? I think I, I, w- I would say AEW. I don't, I don't really see him going anywhere. To be honest with you, I think AEW will snatch him up. I, mean, I don't know if he does. I don't know what his role NWA. would be there. Yeah, what would his role be there? Maybe it had to be, that'd be something. Maybe because like I think he would be used better there. He'd be a bit. He'd be their N- NWA the would be stars. NWA would be perfect for him. Yeah, it'd, it'd be the RVD Cause, now. Cause now I, if, if RVD was two thousand two RVD anywhere. Yeah, I'd say it, yeah. I, they, and Katie and Forbes has man. wrestled. Uh, what's her name? Yeah, she wrestles. Ain't she? Well, she wrestled. What's her name for a while? They had a bunch of matches in Scarlet? the. Uh, no, the girl who's the NWA. The, the Thunder Rosa? With, no, the one. With, oh, uh, so, so what's her name? Uh, Allison K. Is the one that the one was all this. Streak? The one all this. Oh, um, what was her? Oh, name? Camille. Yeah, Camille. Camille. She okay. wrestled Camille a lot in the indie okay. cities. Yeah. Oh, she's probably all right. I'd say. Well, she's more uh, a gimmick. I think that, do we just lose our stream? Mm, I, don't, I don't think so. Is Brian there? She, no, uh, it showed it, up for me. It said pause, and it's it's still good. All right, we're good. I think. All right, so NXT. NXT started off with a very good match, in my opinion. Tommaso Ciampa beat Kushida by DQ. Finish not great. The match itself was very good. Uh, The finish is Velveteen Dream coming off the top with the cast, but he hits Ciampa, so Ciampa wins by DQ. Oh, okay, okay. Not the bad, but yeah, I would have let him, guys that I would like to watch. I would have let him go, but they. Oh, the, the the match itself was great. Yeah, but they 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 don't want any they don't want anyone to take a loss here, so they did it with the Velveteen Dream yeah. thing. Which I get. No, I, I understand. I understand the finish. Yeah, but yeah. someone has to win. Someone has to lose. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you just have to do. It. I think that's great for Casino to put him over that he he gets a win over Champa. But you yeah. know you can't have Champa lose right now. Yeah. And then we had a Ember Moon promo. She wants gold. Uh, she's back, but. Uh, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez come out to kind of start some stuff with her. EO comes out and they had EO uh, doesn't help when Raquel and Dakota Kai attack Ember Moon. Rhea Ripley does. So that Ooh. leads to our main event, which is going to be a tag match. And it leads to EO maybe being a heel, maybe being a tweener. Uh, all she cares about is her title at this point. I think it's fair. She was kind of a heel. Like, I mean, she was yeah. a little face for this. Yeah, well, Candace she, she was totally. Feud, but yeah. She was like, that's not my problem. Yeah. My problem is my belt. Yeah. Why, they, would, why they, would she care? Yeah, exactly. Help. That's how I look at it, too. Why would she help some girl that just, just came out and said, hey, I want to beat you for your belt? Yeah. yeah. Yo, Ember Moon yeah, Chucks. What's her name? Um, Candace. No, 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 not no, Candace. No. Uh, what's her name? Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai, yeah. he just She just grabs her and throws her. <laughs> well, well, you could, I was assuming little. that if she just threw Raquel, I would be impressed. Yeah, yeah you, you could be. definitely see that yeah, Ember has been doing strength training. No, well, yeah, but she had to. She had Achilles. Achilles did yeah. Yeah. It yeah. probably worked her on her upper body a lot while she couldn't really move around. Yeah. Good. It's good to see her back. I'm so happy. I love her to death. All right. What's that? What else? We had some backstage stuff next. We had the Undisputed Era in the back uh, saying that they were just uh, calling out Rich Holland. He's, he's, they're going to get him. He's, he's on their list now. Uh, we'll get to that later, unfortunately. And then uh, we had Drake Maverick outside. He's been talking about how he has it's all hilarious. this stuff ready for his team with Killian Dane. Uh, the music, the entrance, uh, the, he's, he's, uh, choreographed some dance moves for them. And he's, he's been talking with, he's been, uh, talk, texting with them all week. Killian Dan shows up. He's like, basically hasn't 
responded or answered to any of these things. He's, he's like, sending. please stop texting me. That's or no, funny. he goes, please stop messaging or please stop DMing me. He goes, well, give me your actual text so we can talk about things. And he's like, <laughs> That's right, no, yeah. and he walks away. And then, so the match itself is Drake, Maverick, and Killian Dane beating Ever Rise. And it's intentionally, like, very, very, like, entry-level graphics, and the music sounds like something on the YouTube audio library. But it's, it's like, like very bubblegum upbeat, pop. clappy music, and he's, like, dancing to it. Oh, uh, well, it's Drake Maverick? Yeah, and he's doing, like, yeah. this bubblegum dance thing. Oh, and, like, and, super lame. And Kane's just like, uh, yeah. uh, Killian's just like, I hate this. Yeah, Killian Dane comes out and just yells at the production to cut it off, and then just they just cut all the video and music, and they just walk to the ring. That's funny. It's a it's a fun it's a fun it's a fun gimmick. And, yeah. and Killian and, just he, when he wants to get in the ring, he just walks in, grabs Drake by the back of his hair, drags him to the corner, <laughs> tags, and tags himself in. <laughs> and and they, like five, they beat four. yeah they beat Ever Eyes when uh, when Killian Dane leveled Chase Parker, and then he power bombed Drake Maverick onto him. <laughs> That's funny. And then Drake gets up and tries to like lift up his hand and he starts doing this dance that he's oh, trying to make up and Killian just punches him in the face <laughs> and then picks him up on his shoulder and carries him out, out oh, like boy. they leave together. It, and it's, and it's at the very end, he's just carrying him out. Drake like kind of lifts his uh, lifts his head up and just raises his hand like he's so happy. <laughs> I can see them beating uh, Fashion Police. Yeah. You could do that, yeah. It's funny. It's entertaining. It's not, it's not, it, it's not blowing your mind, yeah. but it's entertaining. I was sports entertained. Sports, are you, yeah. Why are you not sports entertainment? <laughs> um, all right, next match. Then we had something slightly less entertaining, I thought. It was uh, the Garganos are kind of walking down the street. Uh, the uh, Candace is I bringing up Indy kid. Hartwell, and and Johnny's kind of shit-talking her. Then apparently they go to their door, and she bought them a giant TV. Later on, they get a USB drive from her that shows her helping out. Well, the USB Candace drive was the inside the TV. Oh, that was it was inside the TV, yeah. yeah. Oh. And and well, when when Johnny sees the TV and sees this from Indy, he's like, "I always told you I liked her. She's my favorite." And then he's he he's looking at the TV and he's like, "Do you know how many times she saved you from being eliminated in that tournament in that battle royal?" Mm-hmm. She says, "No, I didn't." And it, it shows all these footage of every time she's being double teamed, okay. she'd go over and help her so she didn't get eliminated. And then she's like, "Hmm." And he goes, "I don't know something about her. I yeah. like her." And she goes, "I'm I'm beginning to like her too." So I think they're gonna do a tag a team with those two. Oh, yeah, maybe yeah. I I, I think these uh. Skits with them in their house are not good. No, not at all. No, no. And then we had two matches back to back here. Austin Theory beat Leon Ruff, one of the new Evolve signings. And then we also had Dexter Loomis beating Austin Theory uh, because after the match, Austin Theory, after the first match, Austin Theory cuts his big promo like nobody can beat me. Uh, just this typical cocky heel thing. And then Dexter Loomis comes out. The serial killer has returned and he uh, he beats Austin Theory. And then right after that, Cameron Grimes comes in and attacks Dexter Loomis. Oh, well, yeah, that might be fun for you. I, I guess know. there was a. Why angle. would you go after serial killer guy? Yeah. I guess last week he asked him a question, and Dexter Loomis oh, kind of right, turned yeah. around and walked away from him. Oh, okay. So he comes in and hits him with that knee, flying that running knee, mm-hmm. and he goes, "When I ask you a question, you answer." Yeah. And he walks out of the ring. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I guess they just dropped the Dexter Loomis and Dream tag team. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, uh, that's funny. You know what he should have said. Uh, Dexter Loomis came out. I said, "No one can beat you, but someone could kill you." Yeah, like that's what he should have, like like that. Like, <laughs> it wasn't Rokal. a horrible match. Those two, that was good. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah, interesting. It was, it was fun. For being young, he's really good. Yeah, I thought. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. They have the recap of the Finn Balor Kyle O'Reilly match, and it, it includes uh, everything about Finn's injury, a, the broken skull or the broken jaw impact and molar. But it seems like he's not forfeiting the title, so that's good. We'd hate to see that happen to him twice. Yeah, yeah, which that'd be ugh. And to the NXT title twice. Yeah, NXT it, title twice. It would be what? What twice? Well, yeah, because uh, Karrion Cross just had to forfeit it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant for Finn Balor. No, because he lost to Kevin yeah. Owens, right? Yeah. Yeah, he lost. But then no, he, he lost went, to he, uh, he, Joe. But then he lost his world First championship time. from Seth to Seth Rollins. He beat Seth Rollins and then had to forfeit it the next. Yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, the next day. Yeah. So yeah. like, I'm glad they're letting him keep it. I mean. If 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 you have to massage the rules a little bit and he needs two months off, just yeah, let him. Absolutely. Yeah. Your women's division is big enough that if they have even if you have to miss a takeover, yeah. you can have EO and Rhea or EO and Ember can be a main event. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, actually the next takeover is gonna be war games. So you can, that's gonna be your main event. War games. War games is gonna be fun. The well, match so, being so, all right, so let's yeah. let's yeah. So yeah, women's, rely on women's will be Ember do you think, Rhea. Do you think there's two or do you think there's only one? I think there'll be two. I think there'll be a men's and a women's. There'll probably be two, yeah. yeah I, I say just do one. Ia, Rhea, uh, Ember, EO, and 
Shotzi, let's just say, okay. versus mm-hmm. Raquel, Dakota. Dakota Kai, and Ooh. yeah. Now we're now we're we're hitting oh, about boy. a bit. Tony oh, Storm, maybe Aaliyah. maybe Tony Storm goes heel. Maybe 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 Tony Storm instead of Shotzi, Tony Storm's on the heel, the the face team, and she's and then the whole time like EO is like, well, everyone in this on my team wants my belt. Yeah. So you have that angle. So then even if you have a shitty heel a, ro- a heel roster, mm-hmm. the entire time you're like, which one of these baby faces is turning? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So you have that build up. The men's, um, undisputed era, I guess. Again. Was there five last year? Five or five? I think so. No, it was Undisputed Era against, uh, wasn't it? I know Kevin Owens was in the match. Kevin Owens, War Machine, and Champa? Was it War Machine? Or was it? No, because they were already up on the main roster at that point, weren't they? Yeah, I think so. I think it was was Champa, Kevin Owens. I remember Kevin Owens coming in. Dream and something? No. I forget. I forget. Yeah, me too. I remember it was Champa with the Kryptonite Crunch off the top. To Adam Cole. Yeah, through the table, and that's how he won. Now I got to look it up. Yeah. yeah, I I, I forget. Well, totally. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll I'll look it up. You uh you get us started here for uh, AEW. Well, we still had a few things left. Oh, on yeah, NXT. The next thing was Ridge Holland against Danny Birch. Ridge Holland wins, and he continues to beat down afterward. Oni Lorcan comes in to make the save, and unfortunately here, uh, bad bad injury. Uh, Ridge Holland mm. uh, caught Danny or caught Oni Lorcan on a dive, and it appears that let me let me run down the laundry list of injuries he suffered here. Ugh. Because it's not good. It's a, a left ankle dislocation and fracture, a right knee patellar dislocation, and a patellar tendon rupture. Yeah. Oh God. From what Blew I was, up both his knees. I was telling him. I thought I, it looked like to me that he locked up because he was trying to catch him in midair to to, to look like yeah. the strong man, and he, both of his legs just said yeah. nope. That's and what, just like, popped I, out. I didn't get to see. I always seen the picture, and it looked bad. But I was like, "Well, I don't know if it's is he green? They, is he didn't like, know he what he's tur- doing." He turns immediately and just grabs his knee, yeah, and probably. they cut away to to Oni Lurkin yeah. right away. Yeah, which, oh, which Oni the the, Oni's deal. like throwing fake shots at him, and the refs kind of like step in, and then he just goes in the ring, and then they just cut away the camera. Yeah. Like, and I was like, "That's legit." And as soon as I seen his legs go, I was like, "Oh, yeah. I, I like I I made like a really weird noise." I think Tori freaked her the fuck out because she's like, "What?" I was like, yeah. "That dude just blew his knees the, out." The poor poor guy. I mean, I, yeah, I, I've yeah. never seen him wrestle. Apparently, he's next to UK, but like, no, I don't want to see him. He almost killed Gargano like 15 times in their That's match. Heard, yeah. yeah. So but maybe, just that one part where he hit, like let, let, dropped him right on his head was the big one. Yeah. But uh, Last year's NXT TakeOver uh, War Games was Undisputed Era versus Team Ciampa, which was Ciampa, uh, D- uh, Deco- uh, uh, Djokovic, okay, Djokovic. Yeah. Dakota Kai, Keith, <laughs> Keith Lee, and then Kevin Owens joined the team. And the women's was Team Baszler, which was... Uh, the U- UK champion, uh, Bianca Belair, um, Io Shirai, and Baz- T- Shana, uh, uh, Baszler versus uh, Candice, e- uh, Rhea, Mia Yim, Mia Yim and um, the other Australian chick. Tegan Knox. Tegan Knox, yeah. She's Welsh. Yeah. Oh, she's Welsh? Yeah. And she's, I, I guess she's, that, she's, that she's out for this year. Heel, yeah. Yeah. She, she uh, her pulled her ACL or whatever again third time. Yeah. Really? I, I, I think it's time to retire. She, I think it might she's be. The, yeah. uh, she's the Sam Bradford of wrestlers. Yeah. I mean, I like Tegan Knox. She's beautiful. I like her Captain Marvel. She's pretty good. But like your third ACL, like, oh. Yeah. She's only like 24, too. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. Not worth it. All right. So then two final matches here on NXT you had Shotzi Blackheart beating Zia Lee. After the match, uh, Boa from from I think I think he's been like on NXT once or twice. He came out in a suit. He hands uh, Zia Lee some sort of letter. Oh yeah. And then we and then we also had our main event: Rhea Ripley and Ember Moon defeat Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. Ember pinned Kai with the Eclipse. Mm, that was probably pretty good. What's her name? Still green, Raquel. But hey, you know. Raquel, and Ember, it's Raquel, her first match back. Raquel, so. was, Raquel was green, and Ember. You, I'm, I'm not saying she was gingerly, but she definitely wasn't where she left off. We'll say, yes. but but she did look good. Um, she looked fantastic, and she still hit that Eto- eclipse. Yeah, like yeah. it was no business. But that's a great finisher. Best in, best in the wrestling. Total eclipse of the heart. That's what they just called. Yeah. Total eclipse of your heart. All right. Uh, let's get into AEW. I, which I Dynamite. I was about, I was going to watch it. I started Dynamite. it, and then I seen what you guys said in the chat, and I seen what some people said online. I was like, I might skip this one. <laughs> My it wasn't a bad show. No. I mean, you know, the main event was we and the last angle was, but um, it wasn't a bad show. No, oh, uh, yeah, I'll probably watch it. T- I'll probably watch it tonight just to see what I miss. But 
Um, they did have, it was the 30 years of Jericho, so they had like these little mm-hmm. videos of people putting over Jericho. A lot of New Japan references. Yeah, they were dropping them. Yeah. Tanahashi's appearance. I was like, Tanahashi's on AEW. New Japan, real big behind him. You could tell what it was. Yeah. He was uh, putting Jericho over. We did and say, then, now that that president's gone, get ready. Moxley mentioned it. Archer mentioned it. They said Tokyo mm-hmm. Dome. They said Wrestle Kingdom. Mm-hmm. They said New Japan. They had pictures. Please they love us. Footage. Let's so work together. Like, not it's start? not New Japan, but Ultimo Dragon also yeah. on the show yeah. about Jericho's and thing. Is, is, he, is he still with DDT or uh, not DDT, um, Dragon Gate? I believe so. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Bully uh, Ray was on there. Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley. Yeah, a lot of uh, the Lars Ulrich. Chavo. I know Jericho had the uh, Eddie Van Halen on his, written on his yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah. Shock Sha- Sha- Jericho. I don't know. Um, <laughs> then it was, uh, what's the DDP? Um, oh, what's his name? The, uh, Gabriel Iglesias with the Chavo yeah. and thing. So it was, it was yeah, with Chavo cool. Guerrero's uh, zooming in from prison. Yeah, Paul Stanley looking like someone's grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> All Dennis right. Miller. Yeah, for some Dennis reason. Miller. The comedian. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I, I was thinking. I said my friend texted me. He goes Dennis Miller, and I was like, Do you think he's ever watched one Chris Jericho match? Like maybe they're buddies from whatever. But yeah, Kevin Smith, Kevin was, Smith on, yeah. was on there. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. The, the videos, but I, I forget what was the first match. It was oh, it was Will Hobbs versus uh, Brian Cage. Brian Cage. Yeah, I did watch that. Brian, it didn't do much for me. I, I I liked it. I mean, I'm not real big on Brian Cage, but well, Hops guy's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, obviously a little younger. Than still, yeah, yeah. You know, probably not at this peak yet, but no, a lot of potential there. A lot of potential there. Yeah, and he's he's a black guy that's not a thug, and he's not dancing, and he's not a. Uh, I said a powerhouse. Yeah. Usually well, he, well, he's power, but, yeah. but he's a big guy. So I mean, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the big big angle after this is Ricky Starks comes out, but Taz. Is either he says we're either going to beat you down or you can join us. Yeah, uh, uh, but before uh, yeah, convoluted. Yeah, option A, we could beat your ass. We are or option A, you could join my group or whatever. And then option B, he's like the other option is option B. I was like I'm saying option a little bit too much. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it was alright. But uh, it was a triple option because Darby Allen came out yeah. and uh, and beat him down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Darby Allen came out and saved the day, which is still super believable. Yeah, because he's still tiny. <laughs> He's well, he has a skateboard, okay? Yeah. He has a skateboard, and, and inside, that means you can beat up two guys. It's solid steel. Yeah. That's what in wrestling. Everything is steel inside. <laughs> yeah. Or a brick. Back in the day, you put a brick in your purse. The, the girl match. Yeah. Everything. All right, next match. We had the aforementioned, before the match, we had the aforementioned well wishes for Jericho, some of them. We had the uh, Lance Archer promo, where he does mention the Texas death match in, uh, in the Tokyo Dome. But the next match is FTR beating the Hybrid 2. <laughs> With a uh, superplex and a splash on Evans. Yeah, the, the old Power and Glory finish. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've been bringing back old finishes. There was mm-hmm. the Power and Glory finish, and then last week when they were to you, it was the WrestleMania Five finish with uh, Rudy Warrior. Yeah, where they hold on to the legs, which is a classic heel manager spot. So, but Power and Glory, I think they've done that before. It's yeah. The, it's superplex and then a splash. The power plex. Yeah. yeah. I like that finisher. Tully, which, then, uh, what, what old school finish should we do tonight? Yeah. Let me pull it out. <laughs> no. of, let, let's pull it out of the bag of yeah. old finishes. <laughs> Let's dial up this one. <laughs> Wait for them to do the doomsday device next week on Chuck Taylor. Yeah. Or the uh the Vegematic. Oh yeah, the Vegematic. They should, I think they did that already the one week. I believe they Probably. did. Probably. Yeah. But it wasn't a bad match. Kind of a class of sh- uh, styles. And Jack Jack yeah. Evans st- still a little sloppy. <laughs> like uh, he did this well, one. He's only been he... wrestling for twenty years. Yeah, yeah. Well, that jet that tag team does nothing for me. Yeah, my fr- no, I don't like them either. My friend uh Messaged me and he goes, and Jericho looks like dollar store Chuck Taylor. And he's like, and Jack Evans just did a flip and fell over the top rope. And I go, he's still as slop as he was in ROH 2005. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, ROH 2006, I saw him wrestle Danielson. Yeah. <laughs> like, he, he, uh, and then that's back when he used to, if you've ever seen the clip of him in CZW, he does the moons off the cage. The Angelica was and awesome. On his fucking head. Angelica was awesome in Lucha Underground. Was he? Yeah. Was, I don't know. In, in AEW, it's just not, yeah. it's not clicking. There's two guys I'd be like, what are these? Yeah, we, we, we could probably get a different tag team in here. Yeah. Like Blue and Gold, yeah, AEW, yeah, if yeah. you're listening. Hey. Our main event. Yeah, I mean, or just release them and, and put the money towards the people that are out of them. Yeah. Just, they, they don't save do your money for uh, Kevin the, Owens in a couple the, months. Their promos are awful. Like if they were doing them being the elite. And they had this rhyme thing that went like with, with, the, with the hybrid two, like TH2. And I was like, that's kind of cool, but you both can't cut a promo at all. Yeah. And it was like, it was even. I stopped watching being It was the elite. even cut a bunch of different times, like to, to make it really good. And I was like, it's still bad. I can't watch it. 
Yeah, I'm not the biggest Bainey Lee fan either. I like but, it. Um, I watch it. It's enjoyable. Most of it's enjoyable. Uh, as far as the, the the side stuff, the Young Bucks super kicked the cameraman during this, and then the best friends came out afterward with these shirts where FTR are hot dogs. Um, and I see on Twitter that uh, Trent's just like, don't buy these shirts. It's a bad joke. Yeah, it, it is. They keep saying weenies, and it's like, oh, yeah. this isn't funny, and it's not cool. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. But anyway, it leads to best but, friends versus uh, FTR next week. Yeah, next week is the anniversary show. First anniversary of Dynamite. Yeah, how about that? Good. And then we have the TNT title uh, in a dog collar match. We had Cody beating Mr. Brody Lee to win back the TNA, uh, TNT title. Yeah, which I said maybe, maybe a bit too soon. I don't, I don't think they should yeah. put it right back on Cody. Yeah. But the match was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it, but they were slipping on the chain at some points. Like, the chain would be down. It was so long. that like yeah. Brody went for a super kick. And his one foot stepped on the chain, and it kind of like didn't connect with, to Cody because he was slipping on the chain. They, they finally got it. And then when Arn went to the spine buster, uh, was it John Silver, I think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah, because he ran in. And then Arn, it was, Arn looked pretty good, but he slipped a little on the chain. Like, fuck, Arn would fucking break a leg or something there. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, well, it was, it, was, it was a good match, but it's like a little like, oh, Cody wins, so he just comes back and just wins. Like, But then... He says he wants to defend the title, and Orange Cassidy comes out. So I'm like, well, if Orange Cassidy beats Cody next week, it's all worth it. That would be uh, great. Yeah. Oh, boy. And, and, and throughout the match, they keep cutting back into the crowd to Greg the Hammer Valentine. It looks like he just doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Greg Valentine looked like he'd rather be doing Here's anything else anywhere else. Here's a deal. If, if <laughs> WWE made a USA Network championship mm-hmm. or a Fox championship and Triple H won it yeah, and yeah. then won it back within a – Three weeks span after losing it, yeah, the wrestling world would shit all over. Well, that. the wrestling world is not happy with this. Yeah, so I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't have had Cody win it right back. No, you, it's Cody like you just have Hogan belt. must pose. Now you have Cody must promo. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, you don't have to do everything. Your dad did. You don't have to. He has to. <laughs> yeah, it's literally like it's it's like his mission. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't. I hope Orange Cassidy wins next week. Orange I hope Cassidy so too. Cody for the TNT title. I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll, no, we'll, hope, we'll hope. We'll, let's, let's hope and pray. All right. More people announced for the tournament that's going to wind up being for a title shot. Wardlow, Cole Cabana, Hangman Page are all in it. It, it, it seems very, very obvious that they're um, pushing and pushing for maybe Kenny and Hangman in the, in the, in the finals here. <laughs> yeah, I texted my friend and said, the finals are totally not going to be Hangman versus Kenny. <laughs> you don't, like, you don't think. No way. And the thing here was Kenny kept saying, oh, it's great that they're letting a tag wrestler like Hangman Page in there. Yeah. <laughs> was Kenny a bodyguard in there? Of course, you're going to let tournament, in there. right? That tournament. Yeah, he's going to be in this tournament. So it's Kenny's official singles portion. Which is, uh, Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Took two years. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. Remember when he was fighting Moxley one on one? Remember yeah. those days? With their death match that wasn't a death match? Yeah. That they somehow still got fined for yeah. it because of Chris Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything, uh, anything else? Next there? match. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we had, we had two more match. matches. And a, uh, the, the, I, I thought the John Moxley promo was very good at the bar. I, I, I thought that was a very I, good promo. I enjoyed that, too, and I thought that was a very good promo. Where he was saying, about, like, when you're the world champions, every, everyone comes after you. Eventually, your number will be up. Yeah. So it was, I, I liked it. Yeah, and he says, like, you know, I, I even say you'll have to kill me in the rain. Like, but at the very end, he's like, like you always say, everybody dies. And he, like, takes a shot and walks off. Yeah, it was a really good uh, promo. Before that, we had Big Swole beating Serena Deeb. And after that, uh, we had Chris Jericho and Jake Hager beating Luther and Serpenico. Do you think Not whoever wins match. this tournament beats is the, is the one to dethrone Moxley? I could see Kenny winning the tournament and winning the title. I could yeah. see it, possibly. It, maybe, but I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a, a surefire bet. Who, who, I would say it's probably, maybe like a maybe 60% chance. Do you think Jericho will be the first two-time champion? Probably, yeah. It could happen, yeah. Yeah, or, or Moxley. But Jericho's going to win the title when he's on his face run. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah, it's, but he's got to be unstoppable. Like, it's, I'm not unstoppable in wrestling wise, but I mean, he's going to be so popular, especially when crowds mm-hmm. are back and everything. Who and, do you, and if you bring in Kevin Owens? Who do you think the next WWE guy, the old WWE guy to win a title will be? Rusev. Like Rusev. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Miro definitely. Once he gets over the fucking bullshit that he's in. See, now. I think I think what AJ what has eight, two years. Yeah, or maybe, yeah. 
Yeah, he's, he's saying he's he's not gonna wrestle anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. He's one hundred percent going to AEW. Yeah, he's not. Uh, he's not going especially out. That schedule where he's into house shows. Yeah. yeah, he's not doing. He's not leaving on the terms that WWE is putting him on, where he's going out and getting beat no, by especially, everybody. Especially and, now with the, the the you can't switch thing and whatever they want to do. Or you can switch, but we're gonna take out your downside guarantee. Yeah. Well, fuck you, man. I ain't he, doing that. He'll <laughs> have he'll have a great time at that company. Yeah, and he calls on the shots. Have have a match here and there. I think he leaves. What a way to go out. I think he leaves, and I think that's when you see the good brothers make their AEW appearance with him. Maybe they'll try and work something out. I think they will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I still think Adam and then, Cole. And then you also get AJ at Rest Kingdom, so that would be wonderful. Yeah, I don't think. I still yeah. think Adam Cole shouldn't have resigned. I don't know. They said that it was, on, was not for, what, a year or something? Two years or something? It wasn't real long. It wasn't like five years. Yeah. Now they're trying to lock everyone up for five years because they think, oh, AEW be done in five years. I don't think they are. No. I don't think yeah, so. Yeah. Nope. Gotta stay around because uh people want it. Yeah. Adam Adam Cole and Kevin Owens, they have That's a, the, Adam Cole, get, Kevin Owens, and AJ. Yeah, like AJ is probably like he's done no matter what with WWE when this contract's up. But uh even if he doesn't wrestle anywhere else, he's done there. But like the two you gotta go for Kevin Owens and Adam Cole, right? Mm-hmm. Like I mean, yeah, if you could get Kyle O'Reilly or Finn or 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 Sammy, yeah, but the top two will have to yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's really really interesting. This draft's gonna be big, man. Like, I mean, we just finished up with it this week in wrestling, but uh, man, next week we just kind of talked about it off camera. This draft isn't like a like it, it's, it sounds a little bit better because like right now I was thinking well, with that stupid exhibition match and you just go whatever you want and people think about what's what's the point? Yeah, but now it's like they're starting everyone, so everyone's in a pool and then no one's on Raw SmackDown and then they pick. Well, and well that's the, how they well, they're doing the same thing they did last year where certain people are eligible on SmackDown and certain are on Raw, so they're not just picking all the best people on SmackDown and just have like mid carters on Raw. Oh, uh, so the, you can only pick from a certain pool of people that night. Yeah, so like tomorrow night for for, for SmackDown, you can pick from. Asuka, Sasha, Bianca Belair, Dana Brooke, Humberto, Elias, Angel Garza, Gulak, Heavy Machinery, Hurt Business, Mickey, Lucha House Party, Drew, Murphy, Ray and Dominic are a package deal here. Uh, Naomi, The New Day, Roman, Ricochet, Rollins, Mandy, Shayna, and Nia are a package deal. Shorty G, AJ, and Jey Uso. And then everybody else is going to be eligible to be picked on Monday. See, I, I don't like package deals. I think they should just split them up. I think that's well, a good way to get out of tag teams. Um, but, well, they but said I know you can choose to pick one person from a team if you only want one. But if you look at it from a realistic standpoint, why wouldn't you take Roman? Yeah, no? absolutely. Yeah. Now, if if Ro- I know it's never going to happen, but say Roman doesn't get drafted to SmackDown and yeah. he gets drafted to Raw, unless that the only way that will happen, Drew goes to SmackDown. Yeah, do yeah. they just sh- trade titles? Like here, here's the right one. Oh I'll yeah, the blue yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I guess. Well, they <laughs> did that because the Universal Title was the Raw Title, yeah. and then it flipped. But yeah. it flipped because they just put Brock on Raw, and because Kofi was on SmackDown when he Brock beat him, yeah. they just put Brock on Raw because Brock, you know, you do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And then Bray was on SmackDown and he beat Seth for the the Universal Title, and then it became a SmackDown title. Yeah. Now, do you think this this draft has any major implications where you feel like it's actually be taken seriously, where like a champion moves brands? Probably not. I, I mean, I would, they might flip like they might put the hurt business on SmackDown and then put uh, Sammy on Raw or something yeah, they that, might like do put that. the IC title. I mean, I think flip Ro- the tag titles. Yeah, I think Roman stays on SmackDown and Drew stays on Raw. Do you think the Fiend stays on SmackDown? Uh, seventy percent chance, I'd say. Yeah, maybe seventy five percent. What I'm thing. saying is, is, like usually every single time there's a draft, it's like. Your main, main, main stars stay exactly yeah, where yeah, they are, yeah. and then the mid carters get swifted around. Yeah, sometimes and, they and switch it, one main guy, and it's like it mean it literally means nothing. Yeah, and then three weeks later they're saying, "Oh, what's he doing here? Well, he has a buy and special yeah. pass." And it's like, "Oh God!" So I think the the trickier thing to worry about is on both sides they need baby faces. Yeah, like who besides Drew? Who's your number two baby face across both shows? Yeah. Uh, Jay Uso, yeah, yeah, Kofi, J- Jeff Hardy, yeah, Kofi, Big Kofi e. hasn't even been around. Oh yeah, that's Big right, e. Big E, yeah, Big E. They should start building him up. Maybe put Maybe him they on. Should. Maybe put him on Raw. Jeff, Jeff Hardy. Maybe have have Kofi wrestle Otis, win the Money in the Bank. Oh, this is a big Raw. baby face. Yeah, but I mean, he's not. Like, I'm just saying he's, he's. Yeah, I guess he's. When it comes to what they have, he's he's got to be up there. 
it's not great. Kevin Owens, not. I guess. Kevin, Kevin Owens, Owens. Yeah. good one. But I mean, now is Ray. Does I Kevin guess. Owens? Does Kevin Owens change now? Because the whole gimmick is every time you're touched by the fiend, he changes you. Oh God, what does he change into? Does he just become like a psycho? Like he just like he's back to like I'm not, I'm tired of I'm not I'm not out here to help people anymore. I'm out here to just do me. When when you have everybody doing that, yeah. What does it mean? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't want I don't want to see Kevin Owens. Feed you. <laughs> yeah, I don't but either. Just to just to jump right back to AEW real quick, we did forget the ending there where oh, yeah. MJF comes out after the match, uh, and he has a, uh, a a clown with him, Clownicio, I believe he was called. Yeah, cl- Clownico <laughs> or they, something. Clownico, that was a Clownico, and then he has a frame picture which Jericho then hits uh, Clownico in the head with, and he no sells, so Jericho blasts him with the Judas effect. Yeah, like fucking boom! It was the best one ever. Really? Yeah, because this guy, like, he, he, it's a picture. MJF gives him a picture of himself, right? So it's like, and then he does the whole, like, oh, that's so great. And he just hits the clown, and the clown, it literally goes over his head. And he's like, and Jericho's like, what? Boom! I was like, I don't think he was supposed to do that. He fucking blasted him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we didn't even talk oh. about the main event. The main event was garbage. Yeah, it was wasn't good. Yeah, Luther Jer- is not good. Jericho versus Luther, and they keep saying, oh, he's fifty one. He did good for fifty one. Jericho's fifty. Minoru Suzuki is 52 and he's having great matches in the G1 right now. Yeah. That's not an excuse. I don't think Luther was good when he was good back in the 90s. Ha, you death you matches. can't just pluck a guy out of the, the guy you've been sitting in the crowd with the whole time. The yeah. guy who's part of a gimmick that didn't go anywhere and then just be like, main event versus Jericho. Yeah. Like, That's like, I know he's his buddy. And like a lot of times on indie shows, they do that. Like they book their friends. Well, but their what, friends don't necessarily give good matches. AEW is slowly in that territory right now. And it's like, well, not slowly. I mean, they're, they're kind of. Yeah, fate. they're there. Um, but it's like, I'd get it, Jericho, but like, this was not good at all. Yeah. Like, and even, like, Serpentico, like, he, he's, he should probably be in training. Like, he mm-hmm. should be in the NXT. You know, like, not... Yeah. When, when does this well, world... That's basically what Dark When does this yeah. world title tournament begin? I uh, soon, because I think the finals are at uh, full gear, which is going to be in November. Yeah, okay. so I must start, like, next week or the week after. Well, they're, I think they're live for the next two weeks. And then the other big thing there was... Oh, the sad uh, live ending. We were talking about... That, that was great. Oh, sorry, Andy, go ahead. Yeah, the, so after Jericho and Moxley do the... Or Jericho, Moxley, Jericho and uh, MGF do the thing. No, no, they're like, oh, we're not really mad. And then Jericho's like, all right, let's have a party. Everyone comes out, like, Saturday Night Live. And then the credits roll, but it's like, uh, executive producer, Chris Jericho. Main producer, Chris Jericho. <laughs> cameraman, Chris Jericho. And, 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 like, and, it was the, and they had Saturday Night Live, like, music playing. I was like, that's pretty good. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's like saxophone music. It, <laughs> yeah. was, a, it was a nice touch. It was funny we were talking about like different uh, places crossing over for the the Jericho uh, videos. Don Callis, one of the head guys at uh, Impact, yeah. was on there. How about that? He's one of Jericho's longtime friends. So. Mm-hmm. Very, very longtime yeah. friend. Yeah, but that's pretty. So cool. was Lance Storm. Lance yeah. Storm was on there. Lance Storm was his first match. Jericho. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back in the day. Wow. And they were a tag team called the Thrill Seekers. I believe. Yeah, in uh, Smoky Mountain. Yeah. Did they show any? Yeah. WWE legends or anything? No. Bully yeah. Ray was the closest to yeah, that. because they weren't allowed DP. No, no, like Eddie or Chris. Chavo. No, yeah. Ch- Chavo. Oh, no. Right. No, these are like people doing actual like video messages. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There was no fo- well, photos or nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Guerrero and Benoit aren't doing video messages. Did the dude from Japan with the... the... Right. No, it was just Tanahashi. Oh. Just Tanahashi. And I, didn't, I didn't know Dragon. Tanahashi and Jericho were friends. <laughs> Uh, Ultimo Dragon was also because Jericho uh, wrestled for war, and I think Ultimo Dragon wrestled there like early in his career too. Yeah. So. And and Mexico, Mexico, they both wrestled in Mexico around the same time. Yeah. So it was it was cool how they did that. And I said to my friend, I was like, "What if Jericho doesn't know any of these people? He just paid a lot for cameos." <laughs> <laughs> He's got on. Let's see who we can get here. Lars Ulrich. All right. Gene Simmons. All right. All right. Let's. Uh, I had to use the bathroom quick. I had to pee. I drank right. this, this, well, liquid, this liquid death killed me. If you guys want to jump into the birthdays and stuff. <laughs> we just drank a bit uh, well, Why don't I do GCW while you're uh, okay. doing that? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. The Collective. Uh, this weekend, uh, The Collective, yeah, this was supposed to be WrestleMania weekend. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of other things, WrestleMania weekend it got canceled. But it's something like 10 or 11 shows. It's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They're all on Fight TV. I think you can buy them. Like, uh, I think they're, I think they're like 10, 15 bucks each. I think it might be 15 bucks each, or you can do it, uh, like a whole package. If you really have money to burn, you can get like all 10 shows for like a hundred bucks or something like yeah. that. It's all on fight. Now we're just going to run down like three of the shows here real quick. Uh, one from, uh, tomorrow, one from Saturday, one from Sunday. Uh, the final show on Friday is going to be called for the culture. It's going to be Friday at 11 59 PM and it's showcasing, uh, black wrestlers and it's, uh, just a, a few different, um, 
like every show has a theme. There's going to be ones yeah. like Effie's Big Gay Brunch, uh, Joey Janela's Spring Break. Uh, the Big Gay Brunch one has a lot of, uh, like we said last week, it was, uh, what's that Exotico's name, Andy? Oh, geez. Uh, 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 the, the Cassandro? Yeah, Cassandro yeah. against Sunny Kiss. Mm-hmm. And they're going to do like uh, the Twink Battle Royal and things <laughs> like that. That's so. fun shows to watch. As long as you yeah, don't have fun. any hangups about uh, anything gay or LGBT, they're, they're fun shows. Yeah, I think I, uh, before it was going to be like the Bi Curious Battle Royal or something like that. <laughs> That's That's a good name too. They'll probably have, uh, what's his name? Effie? Or, yeah, well, he's, yeah, I'm, I'm, Effie's the main guy. Yeah, yeah. And, who, 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 I was thinking somebody else too. I forget. But that should be pretty but, good. Uh, yeah, I think um, the Twink Battle Royal, the big thing, uh, Paro, that big guy was in MLW. Okay. Who who is openly gay? He's oh, he's yeah. like, but he's like huge. He's like yeah, he's almost, huge. Yeah, he's gonna be. It's gonna be him and a bunch of little guys. <laughs> <laughs> that should be that'll pretty be good. fun. Oh, but uh, for for the culture, you have uh, the Pan African World Diaspora Wrestling Championship. Trish Adora against Shug D. Trish Adora uh, was at ha- um, uh, PPW once. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Then Shug D obviously was Pineapple Pete, Sugar Donkerton, mm-hmm. and Shakara. You have Will Hobbs, speaking of AW, against Calvin Tankman. I don't know. Calvin. What are the last uh, name of Tankman? Yeah, he looks like a tank, too. He's a big guy. Looks. Like, he kind of looks like Mr. Sandman from Punch-Out. Oh, wow. So that should be a big hoss uh, fight, then. That should be pretty good. Yeah. I, I think Tankman's also on Bloodsport. Oh, wow. Uh, A.R. Fox against Two Cold Scorpio. Oh, well, A.R. Fox speaking has guys been... been in PPW. Yeah. A.R. Fox has been uh, sitting. I haven't heard nothing from him in a couple of years. And then we have uh, Lee Moriarty against ACH. ACH is back in action. Wow. Hopefully he's back. Uh, mine right? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Uh, AJ Gray against Desmond Xavier. Yeah, I'm not familiar with either of them. And then I think Desmond Xavier might be in the Rascals, and I know Trey Miguel is, and it's Trey oh, Miguel okay. against JTG. Oh, okay, JTG. Wow. Well, he's doing some something. Moving on to Joey Janela Spring Break, which is going to be on Saturday, Saturday at 7. And this is the... Goofy show. This yeah. is like anything can happen. The, the Invisible wacky, Man's yeah. wrestling. As someone can show um, up, wacky characters show up. Yeah, and as 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 is customary, they are doing the clusterfuck battle royal, <laughs> which could be which an over an hour. <laughs> yeah, it can be anything. Uh, I, I I know the uh, the blow up doll from from DDT oh, is in it. Kiki Taro. No, not Kiki Taro. Hiki Hiki Hiki. I forget. I forgot. I, I forget the name. Yeah. Where are these able to be watched on? Fight TV. Fight TV. F I T E. Yeah, you can buy the whole thing for a package, or you can just buy the show single. I think for seven ninety nine. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I know GCW has some sort of deal with uh, with Independent Wrestling TV where they might come over there later. Okay. Like I know you can get older Blood Sports and older Spring Breaks on there. But at first, but they're on. Are, yeah, the first run. These are pay per views basically. So for for Spring Break, you have Matt Tremont and his final GCW match against Alex Colon. And open challenge by Ricky Shane Page, who is a huge heel in GCW. He's their their champion, and he's despised. <laughs> ACH against Leo Rush, which should be really good. Yeah. The uh, the Rascals. I think it's Trey Miguel and Zachary Wentz against Iron Beast, which is Kyle the Beast and Shane Mercer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lee Moriarty against Jonathan Gresham. You have Blake Christian, Alex Zane, and Jordan Oliver against Team Pazuzu. <laughs> which is Chris Dickinson in LAX. Hmm. Wow. Uh, local guy here. We talked about him earlier. Alex Shelley and Tony Deppin. That should be good. Should be really good. And Shelley, the uh, dude who Mr. just... Uh... Motor City Machine Guns. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, teenage oh, wow. Yeah. And then uh, besides the clusterfuck, kind of your main event, main draw here is Joey Janelle against Ricky Morton. Oh, wow. That should be a fun match. And I believe uh, Ricky Morton's son is going to be involved. He's probably going to be in the Battle Royal. Oh, I wonder what his name is. I wonder if it's like Tommy Morton. Yeah. <laughs> I forget we... his name. It's it's. Tra- I, don't, I want to say Travis Morton, but no, that's not okay. right. And the, the Blob doll, the Blob doll's name is Yoshihiko. So if that's you type Yoshihiko. In, yeah. a funny video, type in uh, Kotobushi versus Yoshihiko. Didn't Kenny wrestle it too? Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's he, what Meltzer. He, he did the. Uh, you know Zangief, the wrestler in, in Street Fighter, who has the super combo where he does a spinning pile driver and the back suplex, and this, like, Kenny did that to the Blob doll. <laughs> Has anyone ever popped it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then Carrie they can, Morton. They Carrie can, Morton, by the way, is Ricky Morton. Oh, okay, so. and they continue to wrestle it. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> they just wrestle it flat. Yeah, and I think there was one more. There's a match that they somehow had where the Blob Doll wrestled the Nerve Blob Doll. <laughs> well, wasn't there a match <laughs> where the referee like kind of helped Where out. God wrestled the Invisible Man or something like that? Well, no, it's Invisible, invisible Man. Invisible Man against the Visible Stand. Yeah, was and it, uh, Bryce was the referee. Break. And he could see him because he had these special goggles. 
<laughs> All right, well, one year the Invisible Man won the clusterfuck too. So, <laughs> and when does when does this start? That is that that show is going to be Saturday at seven. The clusterfuck battle royal. Well, well, the, and at some point also. on the show, the spring break is Saturday at seven. Maybe that'll have to be our. Uh, I won't be able to watch it live because I'll be doing a spooky ghost show on seven o'clock on Saturday. Um, so will you? Mm-hmm. We'll be doing spooky, spooky ghost spooky stuff. Ghost. Um, <laughs> We're going to get enough evidence that makes Brian a believer of ghosts. <laughs> you better bring a glo- ghost to my house to make me believe. <laughs> I, I was trying to think some ghost wrestling, but I yeah. got nothing. Um, maybe what, what I'm thinking is maybe we'll uh, we'll watch that and do like a car ride home tile episode, like a review show. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably going to be watching it. So, and I'm definitely going to be watching Bloodsport. Bloodsport is one of my favorite things in wrestling. I I, I think I'm more interested in Bloodsport now. After watching that NXT pay per view, than ever. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just to run down the card, and and just to explain what Bloodsport is, uh, it's I, I think I don't know if we said this on the air or not. I know I put it on the group page. It's Raw Underground, but good. Yes. Like they actually let the matches go and they they take it seriously, and you have actual commentary, and it's not a million jump cuts one yeah. after another. And Shane McMahon um, dancing around saying how sick it is. But yeah, uh, there's no ropes. There's no ropes. You can only win by submission or knockout, no pins. And it is uh, very much a fight. Uh, it's presented as a fight and not a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have round one of a women's tournament, but I don't know if the finals are going to be that night too. Layla Hirsch against Lindsay Snow. Mm, no, and then you have Allison Kay, former NWA champion, against Killer Kelly, formerly of NXT UK. Yeah, that should be pretty good. That should be very good. You have Eric Hammer against Grizzly Cal Jack. Not familiar with those two. Uh, Calvin Tankman, who we mentioned earlier, against Alexander James. Now you're going to get into some more familiar names. You have Simon Grimm, formerly Simon Gotch, against uh, High Tension Wrestling's Matt Mikowski, who okay. was in Bellator. This match, he was on Bloodsport before. This match may have been booked for a High Tension show. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And it just didn't happen because of COVID. No. What can you do? Yep. Then we have Davy Boy Smith Jr., Against Josh Alexander, who was uh, part of the North, former uh, wow. Impact Tag Champions. Davey Boy's probably the tallest guy there. Is is this the oh, member? Boy's is this the member of the North who wasn't getting in trouble? Probably. <laughs> um, which one got in trouble? Didn't one of Christ. them? Christ. Didn't, he, didn't he, one of them get in trouble? What tag team was that? No, that? you're thinking of a nerd tag. It wasn't the North. It was Ohio. What, what, what's oh, that? OVE. Yeah, OVE. Oh, I thought it was one of... I thought yeah. it was Impact. No, the, the North is uh, Ethan Page and, and Josh yeah, Alexander. it definitely wasn't Ethan Page. Who, well, who was the other... Sorry, major tag team in, in Impact? Dave Christ or Jake Christ, one of them. No. Oh. I knew one of them because they, they took him out of the box. Like the, like the box is supposed to have... Yeah. I fucking hate this. Yeah. Like that Dell thing is so annoying. Yeah. You can't turn it off. Yeah, either. I don't think... You can turn system sounds off. Yeah, I have to figure it out. I don't want to do it right now. Uh, I'll fuck it up. Two more matches uh, for Bloodsport. Homicide against Filthy Tom Lawler. Yeah, how about that one? UFC veteran. Yeah. And your main event, uh, uh, Josh Barnett is presenting this. He's not on the show. Your main event is GCW mainstay Chris Dickinson, another very big guy, against John Moxley. Yeah. Mm. This is a fill it in because he was supposed to do the last one. And they yeah. Couldn't, so that's awesome. He, he was supposed to do the last two. They were yeah. supposed to do Moxley and Barnett. Uh, the first one was last summer, and he had the staff infection and couldn't wrestle. And then they uh, they were supposed to do it WrestleMania weekend, and he couldn't do it because of COVID. Do you think he comes out with his AEW title? The show promotion? Uh, the, the, or do they acknowledge him as AEW world champion? Probably. I mean, why not? They, they could, yeah. yeah. I think I'm sure he's winning. He comes out with the, the New Japan United States title. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Who, who now, the, now that actually has somewhere to go now. Mm-hmm. So... Cool. Now, unless he loses it, is that Cody Orange Cassidy match also going to be for the DDT oh, yeah. Iron Man Heavy Metalweight title? It should be. Because uh, Orange Cassidy just recently won that from yeah. Dean Malenko. Beat Dean Malenko, yeah. <laughs> and, um, Yoshihigo, also a former Iron Man champion. I just multiple both, times, yeah, many multiple, times. Yeah. Also a ladder. Do you think R Truth will ever <laughs> win that title? He, he should. He should. If also, he, comedian if, Ron Funch is a former <laughs> champion. I believe David Arquette. <laughs> I know an entire uh, audience was at one point. <laughs> an entire audience? Yeah, and a table. Vince McMahon's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame is a former <laughs> champion. How? 
A bowl of rice is the ch- a champion. Because the guy fell. And, yeah. you know, the, uh, the thousand champion <laughs> was the title itself. It fell on itself. <laughs> <laughs> like the strap. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like oh, we're, This we're, is what they should be doing with the 24-7 title, yeah. by the way. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to go wacky. Wow. Go all the way. I, I like the ladder. Ladder was a good champion. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And before before this was even a thing, you had Moku Jin Ken. You had Ken the Box, who was a wrestler. Yeah. Around there. That's crazy. Who wound up, uh, the character is in a, not that character, but similar was in Tekken. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I always loved Chikara something like that when they had Dragon Dragon. Yeah. Wrestling's only real dragon. Yeah, and it was a big like uh like a Easter Bunny suit, but a dragon. And they'd do a tail whip and they'd be like, Whoa, they'd fall. <laughs> and All then right. was, instead of CM Punk and Cole Cabana, they had Cole Cabunny and C P Monk. Yeah, C P Monk was and a one big of them was, and one of them was one of the craziest deathmatch guys out there. <laughs> yeah. One of them was Necro Butcher. <laughs> Just like Moscow, the communist bovine. Moscow, yeah. yeah. Wow. He's a very good professional. I gotta watch. I gotta watch more of this. I guess. See what. See this. Oh, this, is, this is all. This is years ago. And this they had what? a guy called Create a Wrestler Tony, and every season, Shikara had seasons. Every season until he just became Dasher Hatfield and kind of stayed that for a long time. He would have a new gimmick that they would come up with these gimmicks and people would vote on it. And uh, I think I don't know if he ever became Moose Cal the Communist. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. But that was one of them. He His, was Ultimo oh, Breakfast. Yeah, yeah, he had a toaster for that. This is DDT or no, this is Chikara. 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 This is Chikara. Yeah. Oh yeah, the one that, that, that they, they proposed that they didn't do was Buddhist beefcake. <laughs> Buddhist beefcake. He had to <laughs> pierce his nipples if he was that name. <laughs> All right, well, let's. We're at about hour thirty-four here. Let's get to uh, the birthdays and history stuff. Some history stuff. Uh, October eighth, two thousand five. Fifteen years ago today, Brock Lesnar wins the IWGP title. Brock. And <laughs> this was after obviously he left WWE and he left to become a football player. If you remember, he had a <laughs> preseason with the Minnesota Vikings and got cut. And it was like, Oh shit, that's right. I have a seven year non-compete clause and I'm not allowed to wrestle anymore. Uh, unless he goes back to WWE, which he didn't want to do. So he sues and he actually wins and he goes to new Japan. And instead of the F five, it was called the verdict. Because he was able to wrestle now. And he beat Masahiro Chono and the champion Kazuyuki Fujita, speaking of fighters, in a three-way match. And he didn't last long. He defended the title a few times, but it led to a split in the IWGP title because Lesnar didn't want to lose it to Shinsuke Nakamura. So he goes to Antonio Inoki's new company. At this point, New Japan was owned by Yuke's, the video game company. And so he goes to Inoki Genome Federation and loses the title to Kurt Angle. Meanwhile, back in New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi wins a tournament over Giant Bernard. Uh, you may know him as Tensai or Albert or A Train yeah. or the Hip Hop Hippo a guy wow. that, or like, Jason Albert. Even in Japan, like how did he get over? Because he's he's big. So was is, big. is technically yeah. Kurt Angle ever revert like referred to as an IWE uh, uh, a New Japan champion? Yes, but it was mm-hmm. weird because at the time there was two belts because when Brock wouldn't lose it, then Kurt Angle won it. Like how did Kurt Angle win it from Brock, Brian? How, how did it go? Uh yeah, he won it from Brock at Enoki Genome Federation. Yeah, but when he won it from Brock, the title of Brock won it dropped to Tanahashi or Nakata or Nakamura. Tanahashi won, so he had like Tanahashi had the the prime belt, but Brock still had the the regular belt. So Tanahashi had like he was New Japan champion, right? Be, to like interim, I guess you could say, because Brock had the belt, but he went defended. But then when he came back, and there was two titles for a bit. So the, yeah, it, the best way to kind of imagine it is like the UFC interim titles. Yeah. Okay. If like the if the real champion was defending the title somewhere else, the closest thing I could think of, even though he didn't get a chance to actually fight elsewhere, was when Randy Couture wanted to leave, but he was still the champion. Yeah. And then he wanted to fight in Brock. But then there was an interim title. It was the the actual title for years and he, years. He and wanted years. he wanted to leave because he wanted to fight Fado before Fado, Fado. was uh, on his way out, and it never happened. Yeah, and then I, th- I think Tanahashi won them both. Then like he unified them. Nakamura, Nakamura unified okay, it. Nakamura, Nakamura beat Angle. That had been a good match. Yeah, it was a Wrestle Kingdom well, Shin- match. Yeah, it was, it was, Shinsuke was did wrestle Brock though at one point in time. Yeah, didn't he? but he was like he, he was he wasn't Nakamura yet. Yeah, he wasn't, like, yeah. Uh, but I, I tried to search for that. A lot of that's not on New Japan Network or New Japan World. I'm like, why is that not? Like the yeah, earlier Wrestle Kingdoms are not on there. Interesting. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, there might be now. This was a while ago, but I was like, how is this not like if you. Their search thing was pretty bad. Like, if you typed yeah. in sometimes, uh, 
like someone that was there, like, you know, they were there, like Chris Jericho, and like his match, like the tag match would just wouldn't come up. When I when I had New or the Japan Band World, Super Liger match, yeah. When I had New Japan World, I was just like, I, I'm not into this at yeah. all because uh, it just was too hard to find anything. It's not exactly user friendly. No, that's a, they could use an overhaul. Like whoever designed the network, well, I like how the network is now, but the network the previous design was very good. Mm-hmm. So like if they could just do that for make New Japan a little more search friendly. It's like you, could, and then sometimes like because of translation, they spell people's names wrong, so their yeah. name would not come up even if you searched yeah. for it because the name is spelled wrong. <laughs> it's like, oh man. One of the fun old old matches you can see on there is from like the late seventies, early eighties is uh, Stan Hansen against Andre the Giant, <laughs> and you know, it's a it's a brutal match. It is intense. I can, I can imagine because also... Andre wasn't quite. I, I don't know if he had broken his leg yet, like the Killer Khan thing. Mm-hmm. They, they, the one they said it was Killer Khan was really him getting out of bed. <laughs> I don't know if that had happened yet, so Andre could still move a bit. And Stan Hansen was Stan Hansen, just one of the craziest guys ever. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so now we're going to bring it down a little bit. I'm, I'm sorry. The, the next two are kind of bummers. Uh, this was um, 21 years ago, two days ago. So 20 years, 21 years ago, Tuesday, October 6, 1999, Gorilla Monsoon passes away. Oh. He was, uh, and I actually saw his last public appearance which was, he was a judge in the brawl for all yeah. between Bart Gunn and Butterbean at WrestleMania 15. I was there. Holy and, shit. And he was so skinny. He lost a ton of weight. Yeah, he was very, he was very always skinny. like a heavy guy. With cancer? Diabetes. Yeah. He had diabetes. diabetes. I think he might have had some strokes. He had some problems with uh, diabetes. Uh, but yeah, he was a very big guy for, for a lot of his life. And um, born Robert James Morella, uh, nicknamed Gino. So if you ever wonder where Santino Morella got his name, it was from Gorilla Monsoon. Mm-hmm. And uh, he finished second in the 1959 NCAA Wrestling Championships. I think it might have been in the super heavyweight division. So I think the limit for heavyweight is 265, and he was definitely bigger than that. Uh, he wound up working in construction. He was a lounge singer for a little bit. How about that? Wow. What if he had those blue glass, blue tinted glasses? <laughs> yeah, I love the blue tinted glasses. Uh, he started as a baby face in wrestling in upstate New York. He was Gino Morella. He, Dick Gino was always his nickname. Uh, Ventura would always call him Gino he, Monsoon. He would. He'd Gino. call him that. Why is they call him Gino? But he just they let, they let Ventura get away with a lot of stuff on comedy. Oh my god! Yeah. He'd always shout out his kids, uh, Terry Tyrell and Jay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Terry, I think it was his wife, and the other two were his kids. Uh, but eventually, he obviously becomes a monster heel. He's just a big guy. He has big sideburns. Gorilla Monsoon, the Manchurian Giant. He was a savage. He ate raw meat and he drank blood, yeah. and, he, was, and he didn't speak a word of English. Yeah. But he was like what six seven. Oh yeah, God. he was tall. Yeah, he was like six. Uh, they built him at six seven. He's probably like, probably six four, six five. He was definitely well over three hundred pounds. He was a big guy, oh, yeah, especially in his prime. Yeah, and yeah, so he was just like this monster heel, and you know, go against Bruno, go against Pedro Morales, whoever the champion was. And then later in his career, he became more of like the gatekeeper baby face. Like if you wanted to heat somebody up, they would beat up Gorilla. Hogan was one of his last big feuds. When Hogan came in, he was managed by Freddie Blassie. But by 1980, 1980, he was pretty much retired. And I think the last big feud he had was with Ken Patera. And they, mm-hmm. like, Ken Patera beat him. Was like, I, I, I think he even said, like, I don't have it anymore. I'm going to hang it up now. And he wrestled a few more times after that, but it was very sparingly. Sometimes he'd be like a guest referee. That would happen a lot. The last match I think he ever had was, and it's on the network, or at least it used to be when they had the Hidden Gems thing. Did you ever see the Old Timers Battle Royal? I don't think so. No, I have it not. It was. It was from the Meadowlands. It was in like 1987. Like Lou Fez is in it wow. and all these old school wrestlers. I think the Crusher might have been in it. Monsoon was in it. All these old wrestlers. They just did a Legends Battle Royal. That's kind of And cool. apparently Randy Savage was furious that they didn't invite Angelo Poffo. <laughs> wow. Because Savage is very, very, very protective of yeah. his family. Wow. How about that? But with Monsoon, after uh, along the way, he did become a shareholder in uh, Capital Wrestling, like we have now the Capital Wrestling Center that NXT is in, that is named after Vince McMahon Sr., Vincent J. McMahon. Mm-hmm. His company was called Capital Wrestling uh, Corporation or Capital Wrestling something, like how WWE used to be called Titan Sports before it went public. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that one was Capital Wrestling. And Vince McMahon Sr., Vincent J. McMahon, was the primary owner, but he had partners. Monsoon was a partner. Uh, Arnold Scotland was a partner. I believe Phil Zacco, who was another promoter at the time, was a, they had a few. And yeah, so he was one of the guys that Vince bought out when he bought out his dad. 
And at that point, he he's already retired. He becomes an announcer, obviously. For a while in the 90s, he was the storyline president of the WWE when they legitimately parted ways with Jack Tunney. And uh, very influential behind the scenes. Obviously, the, the, the main area where you're headed out is in most places called the gorilla position to this day. Yeah. And he's been gone 21 years. Yeah, it'll probably, it will always be. Because now it's like, even if you don't know, it's like, oh, who's working gorilla? And then you just, yeah. oh, that's, that's right by the... the, yeah. the well, I know AEW made a big thing. that they, I think they call it the Dusty yeah, position. The Dusty. But that's what Dusty did it in... Uh, in WCW, and also Jody Hamilton did it in Dusty and uh, yeah. WCW too, and they call it what? What was his uh the or, spoiler or whatever his name was? Assassin. Assassin, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, or I, the Flame, or when he was a single, he was the Flame. Oh, the Flame. I think Gorilla, everyone's gonna know him as the lovable commentary guy. Yeah, it felt like that, he, like your uncle. Big... Yeah, he just, and Gorilla he... Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. Oh, Brian, cut out. Hold on, Brian. Yeah, but, but what he was saying, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan, quite possibly one of the best. Commentary teams you can ever ask for. A lot, a lot of people say Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse Ventura are really good. I I agree, but I yeah. think Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby oh, you there? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, and, and not only that, but just uh, prime time wrestling. Their back and it. forth in between matches was just so great. Oh yes, especially when they would go out and they would do things like they would go like to the <laughs> zoo and stuff. Just... My favorite one was they they did this one it was the Halloween episode too, where they went to this hot dog place in Ohio. And they're just sitting down there. They're like, uh, and it's just them bantering back and forth. Nothing, none of this was scripted. Like they were like, oh, we're going to do this. You know, I want you to, you know, make him fall down or something. Cause the big thing at the end is gorilla gets this one hot dog and puts like the spiciest chili on it and everything. And then he has a regular one for Bobby and he puts the spicy one in front of him and he puts the other one in front of Bobby. He's like nine. And Bobby's like, I know what you're doing. And I want that one. So they switch it around, and then Bobby's, like, choking because it's so spicy. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they had such chemistry together. Yeah, they did. They were, they were a great commentary duo. And then uh, the bad news doesn't end there because the other thing we have, and this was 19 years ago yesterday, October 7, 2001, Gentleman Chris Adams was killed. Oh, wow. He was uh, shot in a drunken fight with a friend of his, Brent Parnell. Jeez. In in one of the all time great wrestling hometown names, Waxahachie, Texas. Waxahachie. <laughs> well, can, I can imagine somebody in NWA that, being from that. If I'm gonna die, I in a, think, if I'm gonna I, die I, in a I city, that's think, where I want to die. Man. I seriously think that's where they build Trevor Murdoch as being from, because that's where Dick Murdoch was built oh, as being okay. from. Waxahachie. Mm. By the way, the Texas. new NWA national champion, yes, Trevor Murdoch. Trevor Murdoch. He beat Damian Sandow, uh, Aaron Stevens. Um, yeah, Chris Evans. He was the inventor of the super kick. Yeah, say, so. uh, British wrestler, uh, legitimately a very, very high level judo uh, player, a judoka. Uh, he was in the Olympics in 1976. By the way, the guy that killed him was acquitted by self uh, means of self defense. Wow! Just and uh, the gun out of his hand. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So he went from judo in the pro wrestling world of sport, British wrestling, obviously very grappling oriented. Anyway, he was judo Chris Adams for a while, That's a but then name. he. Um, he winds up coming to America and stays here, and he was Gentleman Chris Adams, and he he was in, most famous and world class by far, like the Dallas yeah. area, the Von Erichs. He was introduced as being Kevin Von Erichs' pen pal. That's how they brought him <laughs> in. <laughs> Can you imagine pro wrestling? <laughs> and uh, he uh, he did wrestle a little bit later in his career, like around ninety seven, ninety eighty nine for WCW when like they had a million guys under yeah. contract. They would wrestle three times a year. He was one of them. And he's probably best known now, though, for training Steve Austin. Yeah, he was he was uh, Steve Austin's trainer, and his first wife married Steve Austin, <laughs> uh, Jeannie Clark, yeah. uh, who was what Lady was Blossom yeah, Lady WCW. Blossom. Hey, that's something, yeah. It's she like... is the one that came up with Stone Cold. Yeah, uh, it's a very famous story where uh, because he wanted to he wanted to base the character on the Iceman, Richard Kuklinski, a very famous hitman. And so the the WWE marketing people, creative people, gave him like a four page list of all these weather names like Ace Dagger and Chili McFreeze yeah. and and all these things. Like these all suck. And then his wife was like, "Drink your tea. It's getting stone cold." And he's like, "That's it," because she was British, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And they even did a feud where like she she was with Austin, and then Chris Adams had remarried at that point uh, to Tony Adams. So it was like Austin and Chris Adams' first wife against Chris Adams and his second wife. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's pro wrestling, baby. 
you, 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 you can't tell me that you can't get over anything in life. Uh, if because if, any other in that, in that business is like, oh, you just divorce your wife. Guess yeah. what? Yeah, you're Not, gonna deal with it. The storyline now. Yeah. You're like, ah, it, it's too, it's a little fresh. We don't care. Yeah, it's too bad. Well, they too always bad. say, like, that was always a line about Kevin Sullivan. He booked his own divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Because he had his wife leave him for, and it's sad because of how it ended, obviously, but he had his wife in storyline leave him for Chris Benoit, and because it's wrestling, it's like, no, no, you have to play it like you're really doing it. Like, they, they made him be seen at hotels together and be seen in public together, and they wound up getting together. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they weren't the only, possibly working that out already, though. Yeah, but the only good thing about wrestling is like you be uh, when you break up with someone, you can beat them up. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, they said that Halloween Havoc they fought almost turned into a legit fight at one point in time. Who, uh, Benoit and uh, they had that one match. The uh, I forget what they call. It. Yeah, it's it was like, like a false kind of anywhere match. Six or something in like Baltimore. that. Yeah. And, and that was what uh, that was like towards the end of the divorce when she went to Chris and was like, "He hit me. He's beating me." And Chris was like, "Okay." And oh. then they got in the ring and they like legit. I think they lo- start, They have a belt and they're really whacking each other with the belt. It's been a while since I've seen. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. he started. They started really. He started really laying them in on him. But yeah, they always said, uh, like what, what Macho Man said. Um, I did I, an angle with my wife, yeah, and yeah. now I don't have a wife. Yeah, yeah, now I don't have a wife anymore. Keep your girlfriend out of wrestling. I tell people that when they start, and they go, oh, she's going to be a manager. I'm like, no, no, don't. She'll, be, somebody, else to be, she'll be somebody else's girlfriend yeah, in a week. She'll be someone else's manager, because one thing, <laughs> wrestlers are not uh, you see respectful that? of boundaries. Yeah, you, you see that? I mean, I think I've seen that since in my short period of time of just going to indie shows. I've seen, it, so I've seen wrestlers hit on uh, people's wives that, didn't even go to the shows. I've seen them add people's sisters and then hit on their sisters and the sisters have nothing to do with Heidi wrestling. goes to me all the time. She goes, I literally get 15 friend requests a day. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, and she goes, they're all mutual friends of yours. And I'm like, and she goes, 90% of them are mutual friends of yours and Andy Hedder. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's the tor- <laughs> that's the wrestling crowd. <laughs> yeah. I always tell people, don't, you don't have to add them. Like I, somebody won't, else, I won't be offended. Somebody will go on Tornado Tag and see us. Yeah. And I like to post, and they'll see like Heidi, her tag like, me like, or Heidi, girl. and then <laughs> yep. snatch on it. Yep. I, I told Tori, I said, "Listen, if you're like doing she's, the podcast, she's gonna get it." I said, "You're gonna get a lot of messages." Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think I told her. I was wanted to tell her, "Hey, when you like tag us in this, like, don't be offended. Like, I won't be offended if you don't add any of these wrestling people." Yeah, you're gonna. I, a lot in of, fact, I would tell you not to. You're gonna get a lot of weird. You're shit. not. You're not in that world, and they shouldn't. But they're fucking. And they don't even care about age either. No, they don't care about age. Oh, you don't care if you're married. If you're if they're if they're friends with the the boyfriend, it's it's terrible. Yeah, I I tell people that when they train, like I told I told the dean that when she was starting, I told the other girl that doesn't wrestle anymore. I was like, hey, just I'll let you know. I'm sure your trainer told you, but I'm gonna tell you this too. Like, Watch out for creepers. Yeah. Words. I know a lot about this because I read Missy Hyatt's book. Yeah, see, <laughs> <laughs> boy, what if I could have had a, I, if I could have had a term Missy Hyatt in like circa nineteen eighty-seven? I only had one or. Maybe, Maybe one or two experiences, and I, one of them was definitely Brian was in attendance with me, where oh, yeah. there, there was a situation where I was watching connection between a, a wrestler and somebody, and I was like, "This is going to end real bad," mm, and yep. and nothing ever came of it. Thank, oh, well, that's thankfully, good. but uh, watching it from a distance, I was like, "Yeah, but like, hey, brother," and then they're hitting on their wife, like, like it was bad. Oh, it was oh, it was a, it was a, it, the whole time we were even even Heidi was like. Do you see this? And yeah. we're like, oh yeah, we see this. She's like, oh no, yeah. It's 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 that's one thing. I mean, maybe it got a little bit better with the whole speaking out thing, but that is one of the. That's the where I thought it, that's where I thought it was gonna hit. Oh really? Because this happened. This happened literally, like, right before COVID. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. And then the speaking out thing happened. Oh no no no, the uh, um, a wrestler was got in trouble for saying stuff on the internet in mm-hmm. the past. Yeah. Locally. Yep. Yeah. And then the speaking out thing started happening and I was like, oh, one hundred percent this is coming out. Yeah. And it, it never did. No. But I guess I guess the girl the girl who was being flirted with, she was flirting back and maybe maybe, maybe she wanted it. Maybe she was cool with it. Yeah. And she wasn't but I was just like, oh boy. Yeah. It happened. I've seen it so many times. And the, so many times. Oh, I can't. I don't want to get more into I've, it. I've even had a message that said, "Hey, are you with so and so?" I'm like, "No." I'm like, "Oh, dude, I'm going after." I'm like, go ahead. Yeah, there's there's more. <laughs> there's so much. I I can't keep giving away secrets because people will eventually put it together. But I'll tell you off camera because because it was this. Yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. 
I, there's just so many. There's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 I was, I was very nervous. I was very uncomfortable. I was like, I'm getting out of here. That's why I tell everyone, don't, don't bring your girlfriend. Leave him at home. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that with Heidi. Yeah. But I mean, why even, why even put yourself in this? Scenario? Heidi, Heidi's dating me, and I have really, I legit have zero to offer, and she still says yeah. something. <laughs> but, but I'm saying like, yeah, it's like, don't bring gas to the fire and expect it not to burn. Yeah. You know what I mean? By the way, uh, breaking news, kind of. I think this just recently came out. Uh, it is funny because we're bringing up speaking out. One of the people that accused Matt Riddle, uh, Candy Cartwright, I believe she's a wrestler as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did wrestle and she retired or something. Yeah. Uh, she is suing Matt Riddle, WWE, Evolve, and Gabe Sapolsky for ten million dollars for sexual assault. I don't think that's gonna work out for her. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, yeah. That, it's because it's hard to prove a lot of that stuff. Yeah, and then all of that. Why would she sue? Just, oh, okay. just a question. What, what? Would... Gabe ran Evolve. Uh, she, she is alleging that she had bookings with WWE and Evolve in January, uh, but that she refused to perform sexual acts on Riddle, and that her bookings were canceled due to quote issues with the talent. Is that the girl who said that stuff happened in the van? Yes. Okay. So, Interesting. I mean, I, who, who knows what, what the truth is? But I mean, if you're, if you're trying to sue WWE too, I mean. I don't know if it's gonna work out for you. Well, they have the money, so that's why they're suing yeah. WWE. Yeah, I th- I think they're probably suing WWE so they can turn around and like WWE be like, listen, like they're just, trying to settle. Yeah, just trying to get us, yeah, yeah, try to cut yeah. a quick settlement because they're probably not gonna get anything out of Matt. They're not gonna get Evolve. We're probably not gonna get anything out of Evolve. Doesn't well, exist yeah, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Evolve doesn't WWE exist. Evolve and so Gabe don't really have much. So you're gonna I I guess your only dice roll the dice there is that she's saying that she got blackballed because she yeah, was gonna she work there. Fuck whatever. But, yeah. Right. Which, Interesting. Who knows? I mean, Let's see how that plays out. I hope it's not true, but but Matt Matt Rill did uh, admit to having an affair with her, but then he broke it off, and then he said that's when she started getting crazy. Now, now the only thing like, they could probably say too is just like I refuse to do so sexual acts on him because I didn't want to do, inter- engage with that anymore. Um, because supposedly other people confirmed that Matt told them like, yeah, I, I made a move on her. She told me no anymore as well. Yeah. So, but here's the thing too: you have a you have a football player in Collar Kaepernick who sued the NFL for being pretty much for not like saying that he's not allowed to work there anymore. And he's, he didn't even win a lawsuit. I don't think. Yeah. He so, settled. No, he settled. Oh, for he settled a lot of money. Apparently. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I mean, listen, if it's, if, if she has a legit case and what she's saying is true, then I hope she wins and I yeah. hope she does really well, but it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. Apparently the 30 lawyers, uh, uh, the gun that Jeremy McDivitt or Jerry McDivitt, whatever. Listen, they got, they got Vince. Yeah. They, steroids. They've the, got, They've got lawyers, but they've also lost some big. Uh, Charles Austin, the one guy that got paralyzed, he got like twenty million dollars yeah. from him. I mean, sometimes Ventura got like a million. Yeah, sometimes it's like well, I think Jaws Jar- is doing pretty well too after his settlement. But, but I think they just took care of him. I don't yeah, think they they sued. took care of him. Yeah, yeah, because they. Well, I mean, what was to argue? <laughs> you know, like, he. I mean, I mean, it's not. I'm not trying to say like it's cool or anything, but he has a uh, like a four wheeler, like wheelchair. So, well, it looks like because, a tank. Yeah, it looks like a little tank. Yeah. It's like it's crazy looking, yeah. and like, he can control it with his hands and stuff. Yeah. But it's like it's literally like a, a four wheeler, and it's like he can go out hunting and stuff yeah. with it. It's pretty wild. It's pretty cool. So at least he can, yeah, do that. That's yeah, cool. He's still living a life like he has. Like, yeah, a, yeah. Well, he did get some motion back. I think I remember that from Dark Side of the Ring. Like he can move his arms again, or something. yeah, yeah. From like the, I think it's from like the chest up. Yeah, yeah. Because for a while he was like from the neck down paralyzed. Damn, yeah, that's, that's and the crazy thing is too is man with these with technology and like stem cells and doing all this different things like they're finding ways to like. Revitalize body yeah. parts again, yeah, which is which great. is nuts. It's I mean, fantastic. look at yeah. look at guys like you know uh, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan Edge. coming back and yeah. Edge and stuff like this new eventually Page. Probably. That that was something interesting. By the way, his I, name honestly, is in the draft poll for uh, for Raw. Daniel Bryan. Oh wow. Yeah. Um. I even if I think Page is cleared, I think she's. I don't think she. I think she's going to be done with WWE. Because well, when you're yeah, talking yeah, Union, yeah. you're on your way out. Yeah. You're. Yeah. yeah. So Soraya Knight will be in AEW in a year. Yeah. Even if she's not wrestling, she'll be there. Yeah, yeah. Because because this, she was trying to say she's like, listen, you're not using me. I'm hurt. Yeah, let let her go. Let like, like uh, but now you're gonna tell me I can't t- t- to a Twitch stream. She yeah. goes, I make like seventy five k a month. She makes month. a ton on there, and all she does is play video games with her boobs hanging out. Yeah, I mean good. not 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 all the way, but do you hey, boo boo? Yeah, good for you. If I could do what I do too. Fuck yeah, I'm not. You're you're, you're getting no hate from us. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start playing video games with my boobs hanging out. Go. Sounds like a good, I got, good I racket. Got, I got a little bit. I'll show them off. Um, anything else here before we wrap up? Uh, yeah, birthdays. Uh, so going back to the end of last week, Friday, the second uh, of October, 
Uh, jam Up Guy turned 58. Who the hell is Jam Up Guy? He, he was a Jam Up Guy. L Dandy. Oh, L Dandy. I have no who idea are who you that is. to, to <laughs> doubt L Dandy? Yeah. One of my well, favorite promos yeah, ever. Yeah, one better than one Brett Brown says. And L Dandy. You're a great wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> That's the highlight uh, of Brett's the WCW run. Then uh, Saturday, this past Saturday, the 3rd of October, it was the 41st birthday of John Morrison. Okay. And the 59th birthday, we're going back a little ways here, of Max Payne. Ooh, Max or Payne. Or Man Mountain Rock, if you prefer. Yeah. Max Payne, is that the guy from the video game? He sued Rockstar over that video game. Really? He did have the name yeah. in, what, 89, 90? Yeah. Yeah, 91, I think he was in WCW, but he had it before then. But he was got... M-A-X-X, right? Yeah, M A X X. Yeah, so yeah. Then a little bit of a run he was a uh, a big guy. He was dressed like a almost like a goth metalhead type. He would play the guitar. He had long hair, beard. And then when he went to WWE, he's Man Mount Rock, and he had a guitar that was WWF shaped. It was awesome. Yeah. I mean, oh, the, the gimmick dye. wasn't awesome, but the guitar was awesome. I'm looking through my friend's birthday list while he's going through. From this. Man Mount Rock. And, <laughs> yeah. See if, he's in, see if he's in there. And then uh, Sunday, the 4th. Uh, 47th birthday of um, Christopher Park, Joseph Park, Abyss, whatever you want to call him. Mm. AJ Styles lackey for a week. They should have kept that. Yeah, they should have. He's yeah. a good character. That, that He's a good, good comedy fun. character. Uh, 59th birthday of a uh, great tag wrestler from the 80s. Unfortunately, I think he still un- uh, it looked like he was good for a while, but I think he's still having some health problems. Uh, Bobby Fulton yeah. of the Fantastics. Fantastics were great. And then uh, some very older birthdays here. Uh, Sunday was also the 71st birthday of a certain former Raw general manager. <gasps> oh, I'm probably not him. He's no, not he's, I don't think he's that old. He's not that old, yeah. Hey, Finn Charles is great today. Um, former. Uh, and his name is Jeff, Har- Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy. I was, that's what I was thinking. What's that guy? Mike Adamley. <laughs> Mike Adamley, yeah. Oh, he sucked. <laughs> <laughs> former, former host of American Gladiators, former... Uh, newscaster, football player, uh, 71 years old. Former maybe the worst general manager uh, after the <laughs> anonymous raw general manager of the computer. <laughs> and then uh, speaking of people who weren't good TV characters, it was also the 72nd birthday of Linda McMahon. Oh, yeah, she was awful. Too. So Monday was the 5th. That was the 54th birthday of Terry Runnels. Mm. Uh, what, what was her name? Um, Marlena? No, Mar- no, no. Alexandra no. York. Alexandra York. Mm, I, I was I, dude, it. I was I loved Marlena. Oh, she was hot. I remember watching her on TV. I was like, that was the first time where like I was a kid and I was like, oh boy. Yeah, I like this. She does something. Yeah. She does something down there. Yeah. I don't know what's happening so, down there, but something's going Alexandra on. Alexandra York was business Marlena. Yeah. That's... Yeah. She had a laptop and she could uh, she could break down all of the weaknesses of the opponent. Yeah, through statistics. Yeah. Through <laughs> through not wearing a bra and showing nips through yeah. dresses that was her that was her and that was her, well, no, was her, my weakness. her move back then was the uh, her her the guy she was managing was hit the guy with the laptop yeah because because yeah. the laptop back then was this fucking yeah it was like and hitting it, it with yeah. a brick yeah, at that point she was married to Dustin Rhodes uh, and before that she was the makeup woman for Larry King at CNN wow, that's how, how they met oh. Uh, Jen, what's going on? I know you're not a big wrestling fan, but thank you for coming in and popping in the stream and letting people know. Uh, and thank you once again for the share. You're you're the best. You're you're the MVP of the of the network. I appreciate mm-hmm. you. Monday was also the 34th birthday of Joaquin Wild, one of the the uh, Legado del Fantasma guys, formerly okay. Zima Ion DJZ in in Impact. He has a a thing with bad names, apparently. Yeah. Well, Zima Ion, because his name before that, when he would wrestle like the Pittsburgh Indies, was Shima Zion. Zima, like the beer. Somebody get that guy some a good name. <laughs> well, by the way, speaking of Pittsburgh guys, uh, the uh, that that guy who wrestled on NXT a while back, he was on NXT again, uh, Mambo Italiano. Okay, yeah. He he was the guy that Thatcher beat up in the vignette. Oh yeah, yeah. And mm. then um, so Tuesday the sixth, that was the thirty sixth birthday of a uh, local guy who had a little bit of time in WWE, part of the the legendary Samoan family, Afa Junior. Mm-hmm. Manu, 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 yeah. yes. Sim Snooker. Oh, no, wait. Sim Snooker was uh, yes. Deuce. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy Snooker Jr. It's the one that uh, Shane McMahon beat up, right? Did uh, he? No, no, that was Lance. Lance yeah, he beat was, up yeah, Lance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one was the one that uh, didn't catch The Undertaker at WrestleMania? That, that was, was Sim Snooker. Yeah, that was, that was Deuce. That was, that was Deuce. Okay. And then uh, this one goes out to uh, Andy's tag par- partner, Matt Turner. 
Tuesday was the 61st birthday, 61st birthday of Barry oh, no, Darso. No, 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 no. Don't, uh, Crusher don't, don't, Khrushchev, don't. Smash, Blacktop Bully, but in all of our hearts, he is Repo Man. Yes. Repo Man. And what was his WCW giving Chip Fairway or whatever? Uh, Chip, uh, no, it was just um, Mr. Hole in One. Yeah. I think he did Chip Fairway for a minute. It was yeah. Mr. Hole in One Barry yeah, Darso. Right. <laughs> his his no. original name for that gimmick was going to be Stuart Payne because there was a golfer, Payne Stewart. Yeah. But right before they were going to do it, the real Payne Stewart died in a plane crash, so they just yeah. dropped that name. Uh, that was like, they're, Pro wrestling. Giving, they're giving this guy probably 100 grand a year to wrestle job matches on worldwide like yeah good for you man well he was repo man yeah. so he deserves something yeah, yeah. great character repo man was a great character i had was. A, i had uh, a, i, I had wish a... repo man could get a like a point they should bring repo man back but not him like, like <laughs> a new like, like kevin owens becomes repo like man. johnny gargano becomes yeah. <laughs> repo man <laughs> well no no johnny gargano can feel with the room man he comes and steals a tv because indy hartwell never paid for it yeah, yeah. What's what yours is mine. Man in NXT? Why what's here's here's one thing. Why doesn't too? WWE do that every now and then? Just like rehash old characters. Because they have the they rights to it, it. It went so bad when they tried it with Diesel yeah. and Razor Ramon. Yeah, like, but I think if New they Japan did it. Japan does it. If they do it yeah, if they do it with like certain things, like if Repo Man came back. If or it's if tongue like, in cheek. Or if like Otis came yeah. back for a week as like Bastion Booger. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> they should make Bastion Booger as his dad. Yeah. And his mom has got to be somebody really hot. His mom is uh sorry. Ro- Roman <laughs> Roman could be like the new ultimate warrior for a week. Oh my god. Well, I, do you remember in the end of WCW when they had Kaz Hayashi become Glacier? <laughs> yeah, he bought the gimmick. He bought it, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that, but that's hilarious. Uh, he came out with all his like gear. It was because he bought the gimmick. Uh, re- in real life, uh, Tom Brandy bought the Patriot gimmick and did that same thing. Really? Hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. He bought the gimmick. It's true. Um I want to buy Shawn Michaels. <laughs> I don't think that one's for sale. Yeah, I'll buy it. I want to be the new. I'm gonna be, be Renegade. That's a look for Renegade. <laughs> <laughs> and just now, if anybody now if anybody's buying a gimmick, we know Matt Turner's buying Repo Man. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna be the new Repo. I, man. I would buy. I would buy it, and I would never obviously wrestle, but I would be the uh, the heartbreak kid, Tony Blackwell, <laughs> the, the sexy boy podcaster, <laughs> and just <laughs> just dancing all the there time. You go. Just be super androgynous. I'd get dangly earrings. You gotta get those uh the peace sign glasses. Remember we had yeah. them. Jen, I need some dangly earrings. I need and peace now sign that, glasses. Uh, now that he's no longer with us, I'm gonna buy the Kamala gimmick and <laughs> yeah. you're just going, Hey, hey, hey Brian, what happened on AEW? <laughs> <laughs> paint big uh paint a big uh, sun, and, sun moon. and moon on your on your boobs. Well, that's for, that, that's for when I play on Twitch with my boobs hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, long as, as, long as, you, as long as you as long as you cover like, the nips, you're good. It's going to look like Lucky Charms. Yeah. <laughs> Wednesday, yesterday, was the 45th birthday of uh, PPW uh, frequent guest star Rhino. Mm, yeah. And the 33rd... He, he, he gored uh, Alex's mom. Oh. Did he? Fine. Yeah, Alex's mom dated him for a short time. Wow. Oh, wow. Now you said, dude, your mom got gored. <laughs> I tell her all the time, you got gored. She went to PPW the one night, and she was wearing the like, undefeated Alex's mom. Yeah, the, the not Ronda, not so Rousey. I know the the not so Rousey Ronda or whatever. I forget Ronda not so Rousey. Ronda not so Rousey. She came to PPW one time in like like flesh colored leggings the one night, and we we're just like, I was like, what the hell are you doing? She's like, don't you like them? I was like, I thought you weren't wearing pants at first. I I, I don't know what you. I've never met her. She's a sweetheart. She's super nice. Super super nice lady. Uh, but go ahead. Go ahead. Brian. And yesterday we have two more here. Yesterday was the thirty third birthday of Aiden English. Wow. Uh, I don't you know. Like I think Matthew something or another. Yeah. I have my ear pierced, Jen. I only I only have the one side pierced. When you were in high middle school, and with oh, remember you, that you well, could only get the yeah, one because you'd be gay. Yeah, you've got your other ear pierced. How, how ridiculous! It was that? the gay ear. Yeah. How ridiculous! It was so stupid. When you're kids, I guess anything's popular. Yeah. Well, it was the nineties. Yeah. The nineties. Sorry. Yeah, it's the nineties. We're not saying it's. And not cool to have your both ears pierced. It was that if you wore one strap in your book bag? Because you wore two straps. So if you wore both straps in your book bag, you were gay. So you yeah. had to only wear one. I was like, what, this makes no sense. Our school had a real sense. stupid one where it was yellow on a Thursday. <laughs> That's very so uh, stupid. <laughs> yeah, so stupid. And our school and clothes the, are black and gold. Like you know, you know what someone should do? Make ew. make a gay bar in Monterey City called Yellow on a Thursday. <laughs> Yellow on a Thursday. <laughs> and it's right in your face. Yeah. Or or if you want to, uh, I, I, if you're gonna do that, two straps is a better name, I think. Yeah, two straps. Two straps. 
Two straps, two. Apparently, it's sidebar here. The the gays have been taking back the Proud Boys from the the, the hardcore. I Republicans. love that. Yes, the uh, hashtag on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. So like it's like a, it's like a gay porn, but hashtag Proud Boys. Yeah. <laughs> like or just not even porn, just like like a gay yeah. couple kissing. Like, yeah. yeah. Hashtag Proud Boys. Because you know how the hardcore so, right wing people are like. Well, so you, know, you know that the Proud Boys started as a joke. Yeah. And then like people took it serious. Yeah. It's so crazy. It's it's terrible. It's like you can literally go on a, on the internet and just make a joke. You know how like we do like fantasy bookings yeah. and make fun like make stuff up, and then it becomes like a national fucking. Well, group. if enough people believe in it, it becomes real. That's crazy. Well, wait until you wait until everything comes back out, and we're we're all at a wrestling show, and Matt Turner starts stealing people's cars. Yeah, he put yeah. a little mask domino on. mask on. <laughs> Matt, you should don't even buy it. Just start doing it. Well, didn't <laughs> didn't somebody didn't someone buy the the gimmick of uh, Kim Lee? Kimchi. Kimchi. No, I, well, he's using it. I, you're probably using it, but that's one that yeah. WWE's probably not going to come after. <laughs> yeah, they, I don't think they specifically said Kimchi. I think they yeah. just had a guy in a pith helmet yeah. and a mask. No, no, if you no, had a guy, he has, he has a Facebook page and everything. So that's oh. no, we, we can make a Facebook page too. I could, I could be. But I'm saying he's like taking bookings as. Yeah, hmm. they probably don't care. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, one, no one will care about the repo, man. Yeah. It's like when they always have like the, the TV wrestling clown, and then a lot of times they'll say doink. Yeah. But it'll just be the famous clown in the ads. Yeah, they kind of yeah. let it go. But like, if you advertise Kane on your show, it's not yeah. the real, it's not Glenn Jacobs. One like, of the wrestling promotions got a cease and desist letter from WB because they used Jason and Michael Myers on their Halloween poster for yeah. their wrestling show. Which, yeah. I understand. I guess they were having a match where two people, it was cosplay wrestling, where Michael Myers was going to wrestle Jason. Oh, okay. And WB's well, like, nope. Why not just get a random... Jason picture, not from the movie. Like you can easily find a picture. Be like, no, or just a, a, like a hockey mask. Yeah. Like they don't own yeah. the hockey mask. Yeah. yeah, or just be like, no, we're actually it's 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 a William Shatner mask yeah. versus. I mean, I, I seen that, but I I kind of get it. Yeah, you can't have there a picture a, of uh, dude. I Christian hope, Bale as Batman. I hope we get a cease and desist letter for one of our logos. Yeah, because then I could be like, yo, I I have forty eight hours to get rid of this logo, and then we make it cease and desist like the Young Bucks did. Yeah, like I have forty eight lo- hours to get rid of this logo. Everyone go buy it before it goes away forever. Like that'd be that'd be yeah. great. There was a guy. I think he was out of like the Boston area, or maybe like New York, upstate New York. You might know him, Andy. One Warrior Nation. Yes, he just I basically met was the Ultimate Warrior. warrior. Nation. Yeah. I didn't wrestle him. Almost did, but uh, yeah, yeah. He was he was a generic version of the Warrior. So imagine that. Worse than Renegade. Yes. Wow. It was bad. Any other mm-hmm. birthdays so we can get out of here? One more. One more. Today is the 40th birthday of the Miz. The Miz. Wow. Miz. Awesome. 40. Awesome. Brian, what do you got to plug? Murder My Dude. Uh, it's a true crime co- comedy podcast. Uh, new episodes come out Thursdays at midnight. This week, we got back in the old school serial killer vibe uh, with a very, very bad man named Israel Keys who uh, killed several people and uh, was very, very good at covering his tracks. So if you're into the murder thing, if you're into uh, dark humor, check that out. I uh, I just watched the Netflix thing um, about what's his name, Uh Ah, oh, shit. The guy who killed his wife, his pregnant wife, and his two kids. Um, Got me there. Oh, is that that one, like, Nightmare Next Door or something? Yeah, what the hell? I know is there's it, a big one, though. Uh, is it Chris? Chris. Killer. <laughs> I, I Chris. Don't, I don't care. I can't help you there. No, it I don't a know really, It was a really big case. Um, Scott Peterson? No. Is it Scott um, Peterson? Uh, John Bonet Ramsey? But if you I go, think if people kill their pregnant wife, uh, the first one jumped in my head was Scott Peterson. Yeah. No, it's not him. Like Lacey Peterson. Um, not to be confused with Mikey Evans. So if you want to go on Pro Wrestling Keys right now, uh, yeah, they oh, have yeah, a they sale going. It's twenty percent off, and you get your blue gold. Chris Watts. There. Chris Watts. That's a new one to me. I, I yeah, oh. I had to, I had to take a look at that. No relation to Bill Watts, who my Mid South wrestling. Yeah, Chris Watts. Well, so pretty much what Chris Watts is, he. Uh, he had a new girl, and he wanted to start a new life, and I guess him and his wife weren't getting along. I don't know what the case was, but... Uh, this is going to be very similar to the case we're doing next week, but it's not the same case. Yeah, he killed he killed his wife and his two daughters. Like, killed his wife, then put the two daughters in the truck to go drive to dump the wife's body, and then when he got there, he was like, I guess I got to take them out, too. And the oh, crazy thing is, is he, he worked for, like, an oil company, so he had this one, like, oil thing where no one went. Mm-hmm. And uh, not, not to get super graphic, but just to kind of show you the extent that this guy was willing to go, um, there was a t- an eight-inch hole w- at the top of the tanks, mm-hmm. and he fit, like, to a, an eight-year-old and a five- or four-year-old in an eight, eight-inch eight enclosure. Yeah, I just hammered him in, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it, it definitely, because they, definitely, my, they definitely didn't go in easy. My, yeah. Because my co-host on Murder My Dude is a parent, uh, we 
it gets kind of uh, around yeah. like stories with dead but, kids. But it's crazy because like her friend, she came home from the airport at like four in the morning, and the next day, like her friend called her and she wasn't answering, and this friend like was on top of it, like boom, mm-hmm. she was there right in the morning, and then she was like calling Chris, like yo, come home from work, I'm calling the cops, like. Like calling her parents, like no one's answering. Like so, she went to the cops even before trying to reach to the, like to the husband. Mm-hmm. And this lady doing that pretty much gave this guy no time to prep or wow. come up come up with a story. So he was literally within three days. Or like none of your shit makes sense, dude. Yeah. And he's like, "All right, I did it." <laughs> yeah. Wow. So this friend just being a good person in the morning was like, "Oh, your your wife's not like her car is here." Like he had no time to move anything or do anything. Like because this lady was on top of it the next day. The neighbors were like, yo, he's acting strange. Like, cause like he had no time to process it either. So when he was like being interviewed and talked to, he couldn't keep it. Like he was just like not, he wasn't prepared. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. It's on Netflix, but like a lot of it, they showed like actual text messages between him and his wife leading up to it. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a, it's a crazy story. Um, what do you got the plug? Oh, you did. I did. You're, you're blue and gold. Um, Check out uh, us tomorrow night, Friday night, uh, at Banging Beers Podcast over on uh, Facebook or the IWEP Network, which you'll find the links below. And this Saturday, we record an episode. Hopefully, I reached out to them just to make sure we're, we're 100% yeah. good. Yeah. Um, if not, we'll just do a tour and then leave. Yeah, we'll do a tour and leave, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we'll come back if and not, talk about it. If not, you're going to the Flagstaff. Yeah, yeah. We'll go to the Flagstaff ECW. But hopefully, we're recording an episode this Saturday in the Jim Thorpe Prison for Truth Behind Illusion. Yeah. Um, you have your hoodie. I have my hoodie yeah, now. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then we'll see you guys Monday for Truth Behind Illusion. Uh, I think we're going to air, and I think we're doing another Banging Beers on Sunday. So we're oh, doing two Banging go. Beers this week. Um, and I think I'm going to air the Jim Thorpe Tr- Truth Behind Illusion on uh, on Wednesday morning. Okay. So we'll promote, we'll talk about the experience and then promote it. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Then for like a later on in the week. Sounds good. It's all right. Uh, that'll do it for Tornado Tech Podcast. Uh, thank you. For the most part, no technical issues. Uh, Thank God. Uh, We'll see you guys next time. We're out of here.